Howdy chat, how we doing? Hope you guys are having a, a, a good morning so far. Welcome to the stream. Uh, we're gonna be kicking it with some other streamers today as well. Uh, we were gonna have Mango Smasher with us, but unfortunately uh, he's having some pretty severe internet issues. Um, and we've also got Skeletal Steve joining us, hopefully at some point as well. But yeah, I'm just fixing something up quickly um, on my end. And hopefully that should fix that up. But welcome, welcome. How you doing guys? Hope you're having a good start to your Saturday, if it's Saturday where you are, or your Friday night. Um, so yeah, we're just going to be hanging out, doing some painting, uh, continuing on with the Inceptors that I was working on uh, yesterday, or last night I should say. I started on uh, three Primaris Inceptors, which was awesome. Um, so hopefully, um, we're able to keep on going with these guys. Um, so, you know, why don't we jump straight into it? Um, and we'll go from there. So, I believe I was up to this dude. That guy's already had all of his metal done. But yeah. So we're just kicking off a nice chill Saturday morning stream. Now I'm also going to be keeping an eye on my phone at times. So I'm going to be waiting to see what uh, happens in the Discord as to just waiting on uh, Skeletal Steve to join us, but he'll be starting up his stream at 8pm uh, Eastern Standard Time over in the States. So, he'll have a little bit of time that he'll be um, joining us. He'll be joining us in a bit. And I'm going to keep an eye out for that, and once I see that message, we'll jump in Discord, I'll stop the music, and then we'll get chatting. That'll be awesome. So yeah, we're just going to keep on going with the Inceptors. I haven't cleaned the palette, I'll probably end up doing that this afternoon, because this thing is getting chockers. I think I'm actually really running low of uh, the uh, lead belcher in this pot because I've been needing to use a lot of it. But yeah, unfortunately, as the stream title is updated, we won't have Mango Smasher with us, unfortunately, um, unless he does join us in chat um, because he's having some pretty pretty bad internet issues um, over in the UK right now which is a shame but we'll definitely uh, catch him at another point and get him on stream so but yeah What brush was I using? I was using this guy. And my tablet's deciding to be a bit of a pain as well. I like to monitor it through there and just make sure the video is coming through nicely. Um, so that's what I'm kind of mucking around with on the side. It's just wanting to, you know, not work the way I want it to. But yeah. So where did I get up to with this guy? I think I was just painting underneath on there. 
but yeah. Hope you guys are having a good start to your, to your morning or your evening, wherever you are in the world. It's good to have you with us. And I just realized another part where I didn't do silver on the first go. Because I don't normally do it, but these heads are just so finicky with their positioning. That's that dude touched up in the spot that I was just noticed on this guy. And so I'm going to have to do the same on this dude as well. This guy's actually pretty close to being done with the metal, at least to start with. Now I do have my window open and my aircon going, so it's going to be a bit cooler in here. Mind you, it's already showing me it's 23 degrees. So, we'll see how, how low that decides it wants to stay for. check something on the tablet guys I do apologize cool. doing what I want to see but yeah you just keep on painting for now Working through getting this metal done on this dude.
slowly chipping away and uh, yeah, getting it done. Slowly chipping away at the painting, getting it done. And yeah. Which is good. Just slowly getting there. And, and slowly fighting the war on grey plastic. As it should always be fought. So, yeah. Hope you guys are having a good start to your day or start to your evening, depending on where you are in the world. And thanks for coming in and choosing to hang out with me for a bit. Also, have a look to see. Oh, there are a lot of people in this, in this channel. Right. Interesting. But yeah. So. But that doesn't matter. We'll keep on going. We'll keep on pushing through and doing our thing. Just hanging out.
But I don't really matter too much if it's a bit of a messy base coat. Because I always go back and I do touch-ups later. So. It's just the way I paint. Yeah, I don't know why my um my chat on um Streamlabs is deciding to not work for me. Don't get why, but oh well, it is what it is, I suppose. looking done which is nice and then just got the backpack to do for him which is going to be pretty cool it's going to look like that like the other one like I didn't actually look at how this part is actually painted on them but it makes sense for them to be metal because they can move. At least in my mind. You know?
going to need some more lead belcher. You guys are having a good day so far and you're working on your own hobby or you know just chilling hanging out with me uh, just to chill um, but yeah Slowly chipping away at getting these little aerial flaps done. Hanging out, getting the, the base coats done on the, these inceptors. So. So I've currently, uh, Got the goal of getting these guys done, and then I've got a chaplain on bike that I need to do touch ups and washes and highlights on to finish off actually doing two units a month for the year. So that'll be 24 units in my uh, personal war on gray plastic. So that's those two done. I've just got the two smaller ones down the bottom and the two side jets too. So the side jets first and then we'll do the bottom ones. Hopefully, these guys won't take too long to get done compared to the, uh, the Death Watch veterans I've been working on and finished last night during the stream. Because those guys took a while to paint. Which was, uh, yeah. 
What's up? Uh, glad I got them done, but the shields were very tedious and were what? Not necessarily discouraged me, but just put a damper in my uh, enthusiasm to paint them up because of how detailed they were. So yeah, glad to be working on something else and working on some uh, stuff for my main marines. It's always nice to, to get some hobby progress and get stuff working, which is great. Alright, then we just got the underside. One last jump jet, and then this guy's done. At least for the metal, that is. getting this this guy done for the unit it's surprising how much metal there actually is as well or at least what I consider to be metal um, on the inceptors this is my first time painting this specific unit so it's all a bit of a learning curve for me at this point deciding how I want to go about painting them and defining certain pieces. Yeah. Alrighty, so that's that done that dude. So we're going to move on to the next guy, which is going to be uh, the third in the unit. This guy right here. So it's not getting confused. I'm going to move the other dude off because they're both on similar pot paints in terms of their sizes. So Hey, Burp Dragon, how you going, man? I'm going quite well. Uh, just hanging out, doing some painting, working on these inceptors. Uh, yeah, no, it's going good, man. It's going good. Had a pretty, pretty great stream last night, so just backing it up this morning with another one. So, yeah, we'll have, um, hopefully have Skeletal Steve, another streamer I've met through it through you know a bit of networking um, joining us when he starts which is gonna be awesome which is 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time over in the States so not too far away yeah no, for the most part going good but what about yourself man what's been happening how's how's everything going with you
<laughs> yeah, no, I, I know that feeling. Um, it's It can get quite warm in this room. It's actually quite hot in this uh, room, tonight, my streaming room, last night. I think I started the stream and it was around 29 degrees. And then by the end of the stream, it was down to 25.5. Um, so, and that was with my aircon going and the um, window open as well. So I completely understand the uh, struggles with the heat, my man. Yeah, sometimes it can be like that, especially if you've got like a computer or something in there, like it can, you know, add heat uh, just through the exhaust fans and temperatures of it. And yeah, but no, I definitely feel that like this the room I'm in now is on this on the second floor of my place. And so it's, well, it's two story townhouse, I should say. So it's the first story really, not ground. Um, and so it gets like, you know, hot air rises. So uh, all the hot air rises up into this room. Not just this room, but you, you get what I mean. So I, yeah, I do feel your pain there, my man. But that is why I've got the aircon going. So. What have you been uh, trying to work on? You got any projects that you're wanting to get done and smash through? Yeah, that's fair, dude. I've just got a portable AC unit, so it's a humidifier technically, but it goes all right. Yeah, nice, man. What have you got for your towel army so far? Just in general, man. Just in general, not painted. Um, but three strike teams, Pathfinder team, ten drones, yeah. Sounds like a nice force has come together for you, man. What have you given the strike teams? Have you got them with the... Um Oh wait, no, the strike team's the one with the long range. It's the, um, it's the breacher teams that have got the shotgun style ones. So. Yeah, the battle forces are quite interesting. Um, I reckon um, the just from previous experience, I got the Death Watch one. Uh, they did Death Watch one a couple of years ago. Yeah, cool man, cool. The battle forces are generally. I'm not sure where in the world you are. For me here in Australia, um, they're 280. Uh, Australian dollars. So. That's the general pipe price range that they, uh, have it at. Yeah, yeah. So, even if you're able to find, like, uh, uh, um, local game store that gives you like 10% off or something like that 
you'll be able to save a bit of cash there for sure because there's 28 bucks you'll be saving. Yeah, dude, awesome. My local store's the same, so um, yeah. That means you're getting it for around 250 odd, which is awesome. But apart from the Battle Force, what else are you looking to add to your Tower Force? Yeah, sounds good, man. Sounds good. Hey, Mango! How you doing, mate? Yeah, nice. The, the commander and the broadsides in there will definitely help you out. For sure, man. Yeah, I've got a I've got a small tower force that I'm actually uh, not looking to keep in in ninth. I'm looking to forward it on. So it's what have I got? Oh crap! It's like sixty fire warriors. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I saw that photo. You got like ninety three percent internet outage across the board, which is just rough. Um, so, just gonna see what this is doing in terms of the chat. Hopefully it's staying up large enough. Oh, dude. It's middle of the red's rough. Yeah, like there's 48 built and 12 of the new kit like the 48 that i built are of the older kits um so they've only got the pulse rifles they haven't got the shotguns whereas i've got one one of the new kits that's still new on sl sprue that i haven't touched um but also i've got the um got a couple of I think two broadsides with high yield missile pods, a hammerhead with both turret options. Um, what else? And I think this pot might almost be out. So I think I'm going to have to swap over to the new one. Um, and I think I've got an ethereal sitting there, two cadre fire blades. Um, I think that shouldn't have been the end of that pot. I should have another pot of lead belcher sitting there. I know I do. I just couldn't see it. It's nice and full. You can hear that. Um. Yeah, sick. Fire blades do work quite well. Like I've got one that's um, what should I call it? Painted and that, but I'm looking to strip it before I sell it. Uh, and then I've also got one that's new in box as well. So, uh, and then I made a commander out of one of the old suits, um, the old style crisis suits um, and magnetized his options because that's just the way I do things is because I'm a magnet fiend which by no means I'm not saying that you have to be um, or that it will be helpful for you it's completely up to you 
Yeah, look, shipping internationally at the moment's quite a uh, hit and miss. So. Or even just within Australia, it can be a bit hit and miss depending on where you ordered it from. But yeah, the Battle Force will do you some good, man. It'll add a nice amount of stuff to, to your army and... Yeah. What uh, colour scheme have you gone for with your tower? Yeah, that's a bit rough, Mango. It sucks that you won't be able to join us. Was, uh, I was really looking forward to it. But yeah, we'll definitely have to tee up another time for a dual stream. Um, oh gosh, man, that sucks. Sounds like they just kind of went, ah, oh, too hard basket, and just, just decided to leave it. Oh, cool, man. Cool. That's definitely uh, interesting. Yeah, for sure. Uh, let me just, once you found the pick um, and you got the link ready to go, let me know and I'll give you a permit to post it. Because I do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know the feeling, Mango. I, the only thing is, with you being in the UK and me being here in Australia, we're virtually on opposite sides of the world, so it's actually quite um, hard, because when you're normally streaming during the week is when I'm at work, so, and yeah. Yeah, nice, man. That's going to be sick. I won't be streaming um, over that period, unfortunately. I'm going to be away from all my gear, so... Doesn't mean I won't be hobbying. Doesn't mean I can't tune in. Which I probably will tune in to hang out um, for a bit. And... But, yeah. It's just going to be... Have you got any idea what you're specifically going to be painting for that challenge? Alright, looks like the chat box isn't working properly on the thing. I thought I'd fixed it, but... Hopefully that should fix the chat box up. So right now it's not wanting to keep the messages you guys are sending up. When I want it to. So. And this brush is getting a bit more frayed. Unsurprisingly, it's one of the cheaper army painter ones, so. Is what it is.
yeah, it's always good to sit down for a, a nice, hot, long hobby session to just work through stuff. definitely be uh, something that you'll be able to smash through with that mentality <laughs> I reckon so alright so starting at the metal dawn it's just more I'm needing a lot of metal for these guys Which ain't necessarily surprising, I guess. Hopefully, we can get the base coats done on these guys today. That's that's the game plan. So, whether it's one coat or two coats, we'll see. But at least base coats will be done. Yeah, cool. All right. Let me uh, give you the permit, bud. Once I decide to uh, go for it. Awesome. Those looking great. Well done. Yeah, as you should be. They come up really nicely for you. I reckon it'll be quite striking as a as a full army once you've uh, got them all painted in that style as well.
Yep. <laughs> Fluorescent green and the uh, <clears throat> and the pink would definitely achieve that, I'd say. Um, I've been in the hobby, oh gosh, I was talking with one of the other guys last night about this. Um, it's now 2020, going on about 15 years. Uh, specifically 40k, um, for about 12 years. So, quite a long time, but you can sit on my age, only being 26, I got into this hobby when I was 11, so, I've spent more than half my life doing this, so, it's definitely, definitely enjoyable. Yep, fair. I think once people get into that, like, some people do end up feeling like that, but you don't have to. Like, you know, you only find out about it or decide to get into it when you choose to. Like, you shouldn't feel any pressure or anything about not starting earlier, in my opinion. Um, or regret it, because you don't. You mightn't have known about it or you know you, you might not have been able to afford it like there's heaps of different things yeah exactly um, so I was uh, very fortunate um, with that my parents were able to support me in getting into the hobby and that I had, you know, friends around me that I could play with and I could go to a local game store, you know, because I know plenty of people aren't that lucky um, to have, you know, that kind of environment that they can go to, so. Yeah, I, I definitely say I'm in kind of a minority of people when it comes to getting into this hobby, I would say. I'm starting very early on. Um, so. Yep. Yep, that's fair. So you got the other side of the bug. You've got the, the, di the role playing and the magic. And PC side of things but yeah now my dad was very similar he was a he was a PC gamer um, but wasn't a uh, wasn't a miniatures guy until I got into it and then he helped me out with a bunch of stuff initially and then once I kind of hit my own stride he let me to it let me do my own thing so
Yep, yep, that's fair. So, and, and some fathers do that. You know, I, one of the one of the podcasts that I listen to quite heavily, the independent characters, one of the hosts of Darn, is very similar. Um, got into it because of his sons and then stuck with it pretty much. Even despite their lulls and their time where they weren't, you know, doing any hobby stuff, he, he stuck with it. So, you know. And eventually one day I'd like to pass on to my children as well. So. And get them into the hobby and they can have their own armies and stuff and I'll help and yeah because I definitely think and I remember that when I got into this there was a lot of uh, stigma at least socially around this kind of hobby whereas nowadays I think as a society it's a lot more acceptable yeah, um, I'd be the same. They wouldn't be touching my armies. They'd get their own. So. Yes. Yeah, I'd be very similar. They'd get their own stuff. I wouldn't let them touch my stuff, of course. Because, you know, that stuff I've been working on for ages. I'd want to maintain and keep that. That's that side done, now we got this side to do. And then that'll be all the lower legs done. Yep. Oh gosh, that even just hearing that hurts my soul. Like, is he serious? I'd, uh, yeah. But it depends on if the, the boxes have actually got foam on the inside or not. Or they're just, you know, random boxes in general that he just chucks it all in. Oh, right, yeah. Jeez. Nah, I... I used to do that, and I've still got some models in cases like that, but I need to get them into actual foam trays and foam cases. Oh, goodness me. The one thing I would hope for is that they're actually varnished. And then that might actually be saving grace, but that's the only way that... Oh, that was a double. I don't know why that doubled up. Um... Oh. But, uh... Rojo's angry. Thanks for the follow. Or however you pronounce it, I probably completely butchered it, but thank you for the follow, I really appreciate it. Oh gosh, that... Right. So we protect other people's minis, but he doesn't give, give too much of a damn about his own, that's um... Right. 
Okay then. So, uh, yeah, that... You can officially say that uh, someone else also does not approve. <laughs> yeah. Which, which is unfortunate. There are some people that are like that. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. People will be who they will be. Um, so... Yeah, nah, nah, I, oh gosh, I don't know how you don't say anything and just go, okay, or you, you suddenly hit and get him like a small foam case or something for his birthday, <laughs> or Christmas, just to kind of nudge him in the direction that he should be going. But, yeah, nah, that's just... Not something that's, uh... Yeah. <laughs> oh! Yeah, no, he, he is. He is a madman, I agree. But... Unfortunately, some people just want to watch the world burn. In that regard, at least. So. But yeah, I'd, uh... I'd hate to come to a table and have that rock up against me. I'm like, really? <laughs> like, I mean, if it was magnetized in the bottom so it actually, like, stood still, then sure. But. Yeah, nah. At least, like, if you're gonna do it that way, get, like, some magnets and some metal trays and put them in there on those and that way at least they won't slide around a, as much they'll probably still slide around a little bit but at least you can mitigate that a little bit with the magnets in that regard So that's all the bottom done for the metal. Now we've got to start moving up. Yeah, nice man. I just got a new one recently too. I um, I use Battle Foam. Uh, I quite in, quite like their products, and so I just got um, one of their Pack Fifteen Twenties um, for myself for my birthday slash Christmas. And the thing's awesome, and I future-proof myself planning on what I want to get to be putting in them as well. So, it'll hold my... It's got all of my first company and second company. Some of my, I think... Yeah, some of my third company and some of my fourth company for my Marines as well. Which freed up so much case space, I can tell ya. Um, it holds like... 22, 21 inches worth of foam. It's huge. And then I can also put other cases on top. Like, I'm actually out of metal. So I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you this case because it's an absolute monstrosity. Um, and you'll appreciate it. Oh, 
there goes a smaller case that just decided to fall on the floor. Um, let's get this sucker out. Because this is, this is my new case that I'm about to pull out and put on the chair. And I'll stand up. Um, and I'll stand back a bit. I'll have to take the headphones off for a second. Otherwise, I won't be able to move this far back. But, as you can see, that's the case. And if I crack it open, that's how many trays there are in there. And I've got them all labeled for the different companies and everything. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh,. All thanks to my tax return um, for this year. Um, my tax return did me quite well to get this one. So, and then I've got a pack 720 that I can actually zip onto the top if I wanted to as well. So, it's and it's even got a handle as well. <laughs> so it means I'm not actually carrying it. I can wheel it everywhere. Which is the dream. Which is the absolute dream. So that case is awesome. I absolutely love it. Um, and it saves me so much space. Just work towards it, man. Like, find... Um, they've got smaller ones you could do, or you could even do... They've got um, magnetized racks as well that you can put into the cases. Um, and you, you'd be able to actually... Um, cast, you, you couldn't do like with the magnets you magnetize the bases and put them in there and so you would actually be locked into the units you put in there so that's something I'm looking at in the future to also get just the racks for my 720 um, and then go uh, and just get office archive boxes that they'd sell and get custom trays and put them all in there um, is pretty much the, the way forward rather than get mm, excuse me Rather than getting case after case after case, um, is the plan. So, but the, the custom cut foam is actually quite cheap when you get it with a case as well. Like, I think I end up saving like 50% off the um, cut, um, whatchamacallit, off the cut like the custom designs because I designed it all myself so off the custom designs I saved probably 50% of what they would cost when I got it with the bag yeah dude that's a smart idea Get, getting dust on them is can be quite painful and then getting the dust off isn't too hard like you've just got to get a decently large brush like this guy um, it's a army paint art vehicle or terrain one and I just, you know, from time to time, if I've got stuff sitting on my desk for a while, I'll just brush over it and get rid of it. Or, I've also got an airbrush that I can bust out to do the exact same thing with. So. But yeah. So, just waiting to see uh, if. Uh, I'm waiting to see when Skeletal Steve jumps on. We'll have him joining us as well. Um, yeah, that's fair. Like, the foam's actually quite. Um, it's not a soft foam, it's a bit of, more of a denser foam. So it's a bit more rigid in that respect, like less hair does get into it, I will say. Um, so you, you don't necessarily have to deal with that too much um, with the battle foam stuff. The only thing you'll have to worry about is something I've got to go through and do with all my stuff is I've actually got to go through and matte varnish most of my minis just because there have been 
you know, certain storage tray parts that just squish on and, you know, it just rubs against the side constantly, so there's a bit of residue left on there um, for certain models. But yeah, definitely like, I agree with the Magna Rack just so you can, at least to start with, um, they didn't have it when I got my first case, so now that they do, I would definitely recommend getting the Magna Rack to start with, though. Yeah, like, it's probably something you'd want to invest in sooner rather than later, because then you've actually got somewhere where you're able to store your models um, as well, rather than just having a tub. Like, that'll work for, you know, projects that you're working on relatively frequently. Um, you can store them in there, pull them out when you're working on them. Uh, but if you want an actual storage, like, definitely eventually end up getting one of those, I'd say. Alright, I'm going to do a quick check on Twitch, even though... Cool. Just had to check my whispers, see if... Yeah, see if there was anything sitting there, which there wasn't, which is fine. But yeah, no. I definitely, uh, definitely do like Battle Foam cases, though. Their cases are sturdy. Um, so... I can definitely say they are durable. I've got one that's, uh, my 720's 8 years old. Going on 9 years old. Um, and the only thing that has actually started to fall apart on it is the actual top hand of one of the sides of the stitchings coming undone. That's it. And I've had the thing for almost nine years. So, if... You know... Yeah, I've got a 720. So, let me just... Pull it out. It's actually not too big. It holds 12 inches worth of foam. Which is still a decent amount. I'm just having to move stuff out of the way, by the way. Um, I got, I also got what was called a Pack Plus, um, which they don't make anymore. Um, I'm gonna go here. So, once I pull this guy out, because I'm gonna need to take the headphones off again to do this. Um, that's the 720. So, nowadays they don't come with the front patches or the sides. Um, they've got the Moly system that was on the 1520 I showed you um, but this guy's a bit different in terms of the case you can actually fully open the front like that you've got another small pouch in there as well so yeah dude that'd be that'd be the way to go 100% so and then They've got zippers on the bottom, so when you get another case, like if you end up getting the 1520 or you get, um, you know, the, the pack air or one of the other ones that you can put together, you can actually put multiple cases together. Yeah, right, okay. I wasn't sure that they had changed that. Um, so... Has it got the pouch on the front, or the... It's got the pouch and molly. Because I haven't looked at the 720 since they redid the design a while back.
Yeah, cool. All right. I was uh, I was worried that they didn't have the side pouches still, but good. Glad to hear that they've still got the side pouches on there. Because the fifteen twenty dozen, I had to get moly stuff um, to go on there, which is fine. Like you know, it's it's what they designed it for. So but yeah, definitely uh, definitely worth investing in getting it um at least for me i got mine even though it was custom cut trays i did them actually quite quickly the design and i got it maybe in about three four weeks um the only thing that you'll have to watch out for is if you decide to get it when um they do their black friday sales they they'll get massively backlogged um, so, you just gotta keep an eye out for that, is what I'd say. But, generally, that's gonna be the best time to pick it up, because they're gonna have some sales and stuff happening that'll save you some cash. So completely up to you but considering Black Friday's end of this coming week that's when it's going to be um, yeah when you'll be able to save some cash if you decide to get it but yeah so I hope you guys are enjoying the stream hope you're enjoying hanging out with me as I I'm working on some hobby. Uh, yeah, chatting with Burp Dragon as well. Um. And also, we had Mango Smasher in here. I'm sure he's still around. Yeah, he's still kicking around. got it when it comes to cases you don't think of them as, as spending money on something other than your models you think it if, of it is investing into protecting your models at least that's the way I think of it so you'd be surprised um, it just depends on how much you're looking to fit in there. Like, a lot of infantry you should be fine with because, you know, if they're on 25 mil bases, which I'm pretty sure that the Tau are for most of them, um, apart from the bigger stuff, you'll be able to actually fit a lot on just one tray for the Magnarak, and then because you can get the add-on packs and such to customize how big the levels are between you can actually get quite a few small ones because it holds 12 inches worth of stuff um the other way you could do it is that you do half of the magna rack for all your infantry and then you get some custom cut foam with your like your riptide and all that with slots for those guys and you put the foam on top of the Magnarak so it means you won't be able to use the top shelf but if you set it up well with the ones underneath it you get all your infantry in there you could actually get probably a lot of stuff there as well um, is another way you could do it so just another idea for you Um, points, I 
fluctuate quite a lot because our local leagues start quite low at around 750 um, points and then they build up over time. Normally I play around 2000 is a normal like if I'm playing a standard standard game I'll be playing 2000 points um, but you know I've got that many Marines that I can play virtually any points level that I feel like playing if there's you know, if someone wants to play, like, a 3,000-point game, then I'd be happy to play that. Um, you know, but commonly I get between games between, like, 1,000 to 2,000 points quite regularly. Um, and I also do have them up on stream as well um, in my Tuesday night fights. Like, in my 720, I fit a lot. So I've got two infantry trays that hold 72 infantry. Before I got the new case, that held a full Space Marine Battle Company with extra guys magnetized for the units. A unit 10 stone guard and a couple of characters in two inches of foam. And then I also had one that had my Storm Raven two dreadnoughts two predators and two uh rhino slash razorbacks and then in the next foam trade down i had two land raiders which i've also swapped in for two drop pods at the moment a drop pod one um and i think two rhinos i could be wrong um but yeah so i've got like a lot of space that I do have in there and that that you know if I want to play an army out of that I can pull an army out easy um, and just build stuff from there so the, I think the way you've got to think about it don't think about putting stuff like I'm sure you've got the magna rack idea in mind and the verticality of the riptide is probably what's throwing you think of the foam, a foam tray where you put the riptide on its side instead and if you do it that way, you might be able to actually fit a lot more in the 720 than you think. Because if you put it on its side, then um, you're not going to be using as much space. means you've got more space for infantry and your other stuff and even if you get it so that I, I think the thickness of the Riptide's base will probably match the height of the broadsides so you'd actually be able to stand the broadsides up in there as well so you can put your broadsides and yeah so you could do that as well and, and just do a bunch of s slot holes um, for the, the drones to just plop them in there um so but yeah um i hope this is helping you but like to understand you know um how to you know consider your, your um cases and such like that as well because i know like when i first was looking at getting like a you know non-gw cases it was quite daunting, um, considering what I was wanting. So, um, hope that I've been helpful for you. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, no. More than happy to give input. Like, you know, as as the title says, questions are always welcome. Uh, I'm not going to, 
you know, shy away from sharing, you know, what I think of anything or, you know, helping with decisions and, you know, case suggestions, you know, army lists, everything. Like, I, yeah, I'm happy to have a, a, a chat and, you know, but, you know, it's, it's talk with you guys. Like, and, you know, at the end of the day, you guys are the ones tuning in watching me paint, um, you know, which I appreciate. And I, if there's anything I can ever do to give back to you guys, I absolutely, you know, whether it's in the discussion we've had around cases and foam trays and magna racks, then, you know, I'm more than happy to do it in discussions and just chat and just hang out. Yeah, see? So you just need to... What's that? Uh, 92 mil. You'd probably look at maybe a 4 inch tray. Would probably be what you're looking for. So then you'd have ten, uh, 8 inches for the Magna Rack. So you'd have a little bit of wiggle room in there to do, um, you know, if you have his shield up a bit or anything like that, and he's a bit out from his base and whatnot. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd recommend doing the custom designer for it um, and design the tray. And, and that way you're going to get everything you want in that tray for your army. And you're not going to be restricted by their designs, which is awesome. So yeah. Yeah. Like what, um, are you thinking more just the crisis suits magnetizing? Are you thinking the riptides or which ones are you looking at magnetizing? Yep. There's there's plenty of different guides online on um, magnetizing. If you just search magnetizing X model, you should be able to find some magnetizing guides. Um, the best thing I would say is is take your time. Make sure you match up the polarities. Um, because you don't want to glue something in and then realize it's the opposite polarity to what you actually need it to be. Um, so, because then I've, I've done that a couple of times and it's not fun. So, like, there's, there's plenty of ways that you can do it. Um, you know, some people will magnetize a piece, one piece, and then they'll put the magnet on and then the part, the side that is going to get glued on it they actually paint that side so then when you pull it off you actually know which side to put glue in glue on and then you press it in making sure you're not actually seeing the painted side that's one way i've seen it done um so But yeah, everyone's got their own style and the way that they like to magnetize as well. It's like painting. There's a couple of different ways to do it. Everyone has their preference. So. But yeah.
but I've only uh, magnetized the uh, the old kit of the crisis suit, so I'm I actually don't have uh, much other insight other than some suggestions on how to go about it, man. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, 100%. Always be super careful. Um, so. There's the old adage, measure twice, cut once. Apply it to magnetizing. Check twice, glue once. <laughs> no. Obviously, you're joking. Um, as as someone that did woodwork right throughout high school, I uh, I was more of the measure four times, cut once type of guy. I want to make sure it was perfect first um, before even trying to um, cut it, cut a piece of timber. So. But that was just me and my personality, so. Slowly, slowly getting there. Yeah. I'm, uh, I definitely would rather make sure something's done right first than, uh, stuff it up. Which, despite how I'm painting, yeah. Yeah, so all you'd have to do is just get a box. Uh, you go on the custom tray creator and you just do a rectangle that however wide the base is by five inches is how you do it um, that's pretty much the way I did all the stuff that I did for my uh, marines Because then that wouldn't actually take up that much room. Because if the base is 120 wide, that's 5 inches. So it's going to be a 5 inch by 5 inch box out of a 12 inch by 15 and a half inch tray. So you're going to have a lot of space left over to do all those 1 inch by 1 inch boxes to drop all the drones into and all that kind of stuff. Alright, that's the metal done on these 5 dudes. I'm just going to take a quick break. Hopefully this is the right one. Yeah. And I'm just going to stand up for a sec, stretch out. I'll still be here, but I just won't be on screen. 
Oh, I'm just trying to. Whew. Just need a stretch. Oh. Had a pretty, pretty tough gym sesh yesterday, so just want to stretch out after that and not um, have any uh, tightness result of me sitting down for hours on end painting which can happen um. <laughs> not really no just more just uh, keeping um, keep myself in shape staying healthy more looking after myself in that regard more than anything so Yeah, yeah. Ah. So. Alright, I think we're up to doing the gold next. Which we'll do. Oh yeah, man, you can. You can fit quite a lot in the trays. So you'll be able to fit you know, probably three broadsides and most of your drones in there, I'd say. And maybe even the crisis suits, if you wanted to. But, again, you can magnetise the crisis suits. They're not too tall, so... You wouldn't have too much of a problem chucking them on the um, magna racks. Okay. So not even like a, a small unit of bodyguard to go with your commander? Are you thinking of making him as the cold star? Yep, fair. Yeah, true. The Iridium is always a good route to take. I remember when that thing gave him T5 to up save. Um, I'm not sure if it still gives him T5, but... Better saves always do help. Oh, sick. So now they're just T5 straight. That's awesome. I remember whether they were just T4. Um, and they would just get absolutely 
decimated. Yeah. Two up saves, two up save. Like, you can, uh, can never argue with that. So. Yeah, that's true. The ninth codex is going to be very interesting for you guys because I know that Tau really suffered in eighth. Um, not just in terms of the codex, but how they played and everything like that. But now that you guys don't have to pay to Overwatch, that's at least uh, something to help. But, you know, that is what it is. Alright, these guys are getting there. We got the gold done relatively quickly. But it will need a second code, as it always does. Um, yep, yeah, that's fair. Just goes, nah, you're not going to get a save. Alright, um, let's go with, yeah, virtually, right? Just deletes the unit. Um, we'll actually go with the brown, because there's one couple of purity seals I want to get the brown on as the base coat. Of course, I get a little bit of gold on my pinky as I pick up. Oh, nice! Yeah, Creed can be... Creed can be tough. I, um... So... <laughs> that's uh that's a sick play right there just ganking a tank turn one oh, in one shot what weapon did you fire Oh, oh, dude, that's sick. So you're doing it minimum. What's that? That's going to be three. That's going to be 15 damage before the additional D3s if you wound all of them. Exactly. So it's like you just vaporize in one shot. That's nuts.
Yeah, if you win with all of them. Um, so yeah, and Skeletal Steve just got to a message to me. So, I'm just going to quickly finish this off and then I'm going to hit him back with a message. Yeah, yeah, I saw, saw Mango. Um, I'm just going to fire a message back to him saying, yeah, all good. We've got brown down as the base coat for when I do you sharp the bone so it's not just going straight on a black or blue yeah right <laughs> friendship boots gosh ah oh. I mean you're gonna shoot what you're gonna shoot right it's not gonna be too you know it's designed to kill stuff so, I don't know. Yeah, exactly, right? Like, it's a game. Stuff is meant to die. You know? Yeah, exactly. Like, if you don't whinge at him, he shouldn't whinge at you. Like, it is literally just a game. Like, come on. Hey, thanks for the follow, Burp Dragon. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Burp Dragon. Too easy, man. I'll uh, I'll catch you soon. I think it's at this point where I'm actually going to need to get my Gravis Armor Captain out to uh, get an idea of how to actually uh, paint the shoulder pads on this dude. Oh, and of course I'd have to pull it by the one thing that decides to pop off. Which would be the, uh, the Molly system. company trays and get these guys going. I'm going to have to relieve some pressure up top, otherwise it's not going to want to do what I want it to do. I might have 
to swap the labels over for actual um, masking tape and not painter's tape. They're just not wanting to stay, stay on there otherwise. Then I've just got to fix this battle pouch so that it's all nice and clipped on. Otherwise, it could end very badly. So, I'm going to re clip on the top rivet. So, it is getting a, a little bit warm in here, despite the fact that I've got the window open and the aircon going. So, alright, how do we do it? Alright, there is blue on the underneath, cool. That solves how I'm going to paint these. That guy off to the side. And then we'll just keep on going. We're doing this Castellan green for the shoulder pads. Trimming. Because these guys are in the fourth company. Which is my bikes and uh, fast moving company. Hope you guys are enjoying the stream. Hope you're hanging out with myself. We'll have uh, Skeletal Steve with us shortly. He is just kicking off his stream in a, a minute or two. And then we'll jump in and I'll introduce you to him and we can have a chat and find a bit more about him. And you can find out a bit more about me as well. And just, you know, work to get him across the line of affiliate. Which I, uh, thanks to Mango Smasher, was able to do just this week. Just gone. Um, had an amazing Saturday stream last week. And so that got me over the line, which is great. And, you know, being a part of a community that does that for one another is awesome. Now, he's just messaged me saying uh, that he's good to go.
So I'm going to pause my music so that I can up my headphone volume. Alrighty, Skeletal Steve, are you there? Yeah, how you doing, sir? I'm doing well, mate. Yourself? Great, great, thank you. Welcome, welcome to the stream for, for those of you uh, that are, you know, jumping in on Skeletal Steve's stream. If you don't know who I am, my name's ScottyD49. Um, and we actually uh, have met through um, Mango Smasher. <laughs> yeah. That crazy, crazy individual, man. I swear, he's got more more tricks than a than a magician. <laughs> <laughs> he does, he does, doesn't he? Um, but yeah, no, he's yeah. awesome. He uh, last weekend does just telling my guys um, that uh, yeah, I just got affiliate last weekend because of uh, you know him and Spartacan and um, those guys jumping in and watching uh, or really lurking in one of my streams to get me to the affiliate status so it feels good to be able to help you out and hopefully get you to be in the same sweet i greatly appreciate it it's uh like when i got told that there mango was like oh just go and check your followers now go and check them now go and check them now and i was like 50 and i just i was like i don't know what kind of magic spell you're doing but <laughs> i appreciate it mm. so oh it's it's a good feeling so yeah, it is, man. That's all. But, uh, so, so what are you getting into tonight? Uh, or morning for you. It's currently midday for me. Um, oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> I've been here in Australia. So, I'm actually, um, currently working on, um, some Space Marine Inceptors. So, and to help you out, mate, I'm gonna change my screen off. I've got a second. Uh, screen going. I'm gonna hopefully this one should have followed you. I'm gonna help you out and I'm gonna chuck your stream up as well so I can see what you're working on. Sweet. I appreciate that. I I would I would do the same, but my 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 computer's a little old and it barely runs all the crap that I got going in the background. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I feel that man. I uh my laptop is starting to end up the same way it's probably about uh, going on maybe four years old now so <laughs> but you know it still manages to run hey. when yeah that's what's up i mean i had a computer that was before this one that was like six years old and it was still doing what i asked it to but streaming definitely has a lot more stuff that that goes on in the background that people don't realize i guess sometimes when yeah want to start it and so I was like, oh, I could do this with this computer. And it was like, Mwah. no. <laughs> yeah. Like, I use my laptop um, to do, like, all my bat rep streaming. When I'm in my local game store, I, I take my streaming rig and I take my cameras and everything and I set up there and live stream games from there. Um, and it seems to go all right. It's just dependent a bit, bit on the connection. And I, uh, I tend to get there in advance, so I'm able to actually... Uh, um, uh, what you call it? Uh, boot up the computer so it's nice and warm and ready to go, um, without having to rush. So, which does does help, but I think I need yeah. to pull a lot more stuff off of it. Um, but yeah, dude, tell me a bit about yourself. You know, how long you been in the hobby? Uh, what armies you play? Go for it. Oh, um, well, let's see. I was first introduced to Warhammer itself in uh 2000 uh oddly enough i was trying to catch up with my schoolwork by going to summer school and a guy that i met there was looking at a cool magazine and he was getting ahead and he told me all about it and we started with uh warhammer fantasy and then um so we split a battle box and it was kind of downhill from there and i've been I've been on and off with the hobby of trying to decide if I would like 40k better, if I like fantasy better, and I can't decide, so I'm usually in both. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that, um, even though he and I don't talk anymore, one of the things that he would tell me all the time is, you know, paint is very forgiving. You know, 
just grab you a couple models, try a few different paint schemes out, try different paints, you know, and see how it goes. And if you don't like it, you dunk it. Hey, it's it, it, How you doing, Start all over again. So I've been trying to live by that motto when I paint. So. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. I'm I'm very much the same. Like if you if you look at my stuff, what I'm working on right now, you'll see the base coats are actually quite rough. I'm uh. I'm a bit of a touch-up fiend. I, I like to always go back and touch things up and make sure they're looking nice. And yeah, that definitely, I definitely agree with that for sure. So, what armies did you uh, end up collecting for fantasy? Um, I, I, I believe we had, we had made a deal where I, even though I paid half for the battle box i think it was like empire and orcs were in it i didn't like either at the time and i was just like is there an army that i can you know be rough and tough and not have to buy all this all these models because i don't know if i'm going to be into it or how much mon money i'll have and so i went into chaos warriors yeah um and so i did that for a while until um the Empire he got rid of, he went to Bretonian, and when they got into hand-to-hand -hand with me, they slaughtered me. Mm. Um, but the real deciding factor was when he played his his uh, goblin, his night goblin army. And uh, I never knew when that uh, Fanatic was going to come out. And it was just, even though it was my own units getting obliterated, it was still fun. Yeah. And so after that, I was like, that's, that's the army that I would like to do one day. And every time I had looked at moving into the orc aspect, either for fantasy or for 40K, it was always in a bad time. And I was like, man, I, you know, I, I don't know if I can afford all these guys. So I'll just go with whatever is the cheapest, whatever everybody else is playing. And it happened to be 40K was more popular, and I went with Space Marines. Yeah. So I have a lot of first-gen Space Marines, um, a lot of stuff that I haven't painted, but I have a at least maybe maybe a thousand point. Oh, thank you, Alicorn, for the host. Appreciate it. But I got about maybe maybe five hundred points worth, maybe a little bit more in um, painted models. Everything else needs a lot of work. Yeah. So my goal my goal is is to have some some orcs some 40k orcs or some fantasy orcs some orc of some kind because they're so funny and luckily my brother gave me my uh the second edition ones that i'm working on now and uh he goes i hope they can help and i was like sweet and it wasn't like a six month ago it was like a couple years ago he goes i don't want them if you want to paint them if you want to play with them you can do whatever you want with them they're just in my way i said okay and i never touched them and now i'm touching them <laughs> yep. Ah, awesome, but, man. Uh, but what about you? Like, what's what's your preferred army? Like, playing wise, painting wise, because I know that sometimes that can differ. Yeah. So uh, for me, I actually got into the hobby. Uh, kind of give it kind of full background. Um, I started off with the Lord of the Rings strategy battle game. Um, so that's how I got into it um, when I was. Uh, 11 so about 15 years ago um a mate of mine i was over at his place one um uh, one time i think it was a long weekend he was a family friend and i saw his models and i was asking about him and then he was like oh I just explain them to me which is awesome and i was like really interested and so um end up getting back then it was the minds of moria starter set i got that for christmas um awesome and you know, it, it kind of you know, snowboarded from there. My two younger brothers got into it, but then, you know, very similar to y yourself, like, they no longer do it, so I kind of inherited everything from them. Um, <laughs> about three years later, I uh, jumped into 40K at the start of 5th edition uh, with Assault on Black Reach, so Space Marines and Orcs. Um, and I've kind of always played Space Marines since. Um, throughout the editions, <laughs> um, I've got a full second company, and I'm working on doing uh, a full 
first, third, fourth, and fifth company at this stage, and a tenth company as well. Holy crap. <laughs> hey. Sorry, I'll just give you a sec. The Smasher 2 Mango, thanks for the follow. <laughs> um, awesome. And, and so I was... Yeah, started my Marines, and I changed my color scheme, I think, twice on them. And then I finally settled on the, the way I'm painting them now, which is still a similar color scheme, but different chapter heraldry and all that. So, um, so I've got a lot of stuff for the Marines, and around the start of 8th edition Fantasy is when I got into Fantasy, and I was a uh, high elf player for that. Ooh. So I, I, uh, I, I like the fact that the elves, whilst they mightn't have been... Um, you know, super strong or super tough like the Chaos Warriors or, you know, have you know, massive artillery and massive blocks of infantry like, you know, other armies that they uh, struck first. And I really like that <laughs> rule idea um, that no matter who charged and, you know, despite initiative that they'd always get to fight first. And then when they they got the whole thing of, oh, yeah, if you've got fight first and you've got the higher initiative, you uh, get rerolls. Um, and that was just awesome. I absolutely loved that because it meant that in combat, most often, like, the elves were at least weapon skill. Um, um, whatchamacallit, um, at least weapon skill four or five minimum. So it was always, like, kind of hitting on twos or threes and... <laughs> Uh, th threes or fours, sorry, uh, depending on what I was fighting. And yeah, I'd run massive blocks of Sea Guard, a uh, lot of in Sea Guard, so there'd be spearmen with bows as well, so they'd be able to do both. Um, and uh, Phoenix Guard, so they, they were a, a nice unit that had halberds, but they also had a, um, uh, whatchamacallit, a uh, three up ward save. Yeah, too easy to smash them to Mango, hey. and welcome Kratos, how's Did it going, man? Did you this army in a competition? Uh, I tried to, um, there was actually a bit of a story there when it was, um, some of my mates who did play Fantasy at the time were going to a, an event, and they were practicing 2,000 point, or 2,400 point lists, um, and so, uh, we were playing, and then... It ended up being that there was a 40k tournament on the same weekend as the fantasy tournament and I picked the 40k one because the fantasy one had a lot of people going to it and the 40k one didn't so I was like well I'll go play the 40k one and so that kind of determined the the competitive path I went down and I was a competitive 40k player for a while um, awesome. and yeah so I did that for a number of the number of years and then eventually became a tournament organizer which I took a bit of a break from, and I, you know, getting back into that now um, at my local store, and you know, running relatively large events and such over the past few years, and yeah, it's just been quite, quite a journey. And you know, now, you know, just last night on my stream, we uh, I finished painting up a unit of Death Watch, uh, so I got them that go in with my Marines as well, um, and then yeah, I've got I'm. Um, got two halves of Indominus and I'm starting a Necron army so Dang. and uh Holy cow. yeah Necrons are supposed to be good too man yes yes they are and also Mango Smash has told me to ask you about the uh host train yeah um let's see <laughs> there's a lot <laughs> um they were nice enough that, uh, let's see, Alicorn, let's see, Mango Smasher, uh, Flower Basket, thank you very much, um, Boogie Boogie Boo, 45, thank you, let's see, Rosemary, thank you, um, and Mobly Madness, hopefully I said that right, thank you, thank you very much for all the hosts. I appreciate it. <laughs> that's that's huge. <laughs> yeah, right. That's awesome, man. <laughs> so I um 
and I, I don't I don't mean to say this in a sob story, so so don't take it that way. I'm not you know that kind of person, but it feels immensely good getting to affiliate, not just for the the journey there, but um, not too long ago I had my old job hit me up, and they're like, hey, are you interested in coming back? And it was a really well paying job, and I said, of course I am, but I'm about to get married soon. There's kids involved, and um, I need to make sure that everything's in line first. So I got everything in line, and I called them back, and I called them back, and nothing happened. Nobody ever returned my calls. Well, the wife, she works at optometry place, and all of a sudden, she's like, um, hey, I, I don't want to get you upset, but there was two people from the company calling to set up an appointment. I wonder if they're new hires because they've never been here before. And it kind of like, you know, put a stick in my side a little bit, but I was like, you know what? I kind of figured the company would do this like they did before. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to do the best I can to make streaming my thing. And with your help, with everybody's help that happens to be following and hosting has got me to this point. So I just want to let you know that I am immensely happy, immensely grateful. Thank you very much for making this a reality. Yeah, for sure, man. Uh, you know, for me, I, uh, you know, I've got a, a, a relatively you know, stable job now. I didn't before. Um, when we had our lockdowns, I was, uh, you know, I was still a cat. I'd stepped down from being a manager because of the stresses of Christmas and in retail is just, ugh, I, I hate thinking yeah. about it. Um, and <laughs> So I stepped down from that and I was casual and then the lockdowns happened and it was like, great. I was pretty much, um, you know, not working for about five, six weeks there. And I really wanted to start streaming, but, you know, I didn't have any webcams or anything. And so I, I really couldn't. Then I got back to work and, you know, a friend approached me and offered me to do, offered a, a new job to me, which I took. And that's been really good. And so that's actually enabled me to have the time to actually look properly into doing streaming and you know doing you know where whether it's and i tried a bunch of gaming streaming and it wasn't getting much traction so i was like you know what let's try hobby streaming and i just picked up traction really quick i was like right this is <laughs> this is the this is the market this is the niche that i'm gonna work in <laughs> at least to start with and then you know we'll go from there and so yeah 100 percent. like you know i was talking with mango recently and it's like well you know, unlike gamer streamers, um, I'm not sure whether it was Manga or it was um, another guy, um, Aussie Gold Times, um, but it was we were pretty much saying um, that you know gamer streamers are just so competitive in terms of like their communities, and that you know generally someone will follow just one particular streamer um, or maybe yeah. two, but they'll only generally subscribe to one. Whereas you know in hobby streamers, like you know we all share the community because the directory is so small. Um, you know, some yeah. people will jump in from one stream to another and just <laughs> hang out, um, you know, which which is great. And, and, you know, it's one of those things, you know, this type of thing you only ever see happen uh, when they're playing a game together. Um, yeah. Whereas for us, it's like, no, like we could, you know, we can host each other and hang out, um, you know, maybe one of us is, you know, for example, if I run an event and, you know, you guys are offline, you've got me hosted, like it'll come up on your channel. And so there's, you know, there's some coverage there for, you know, games being played. Sure, I might be actually playing, but I'm there, I'm streaming it, I'm hanging out, you know, chatting with chat, doing some uh, color commentary stuff, like... You know, that type of thing I, I find to be one of the things that really drew me in because I, I remember, at least initially when Frontline Gaming started streaming all of their events and all that, I was super in it. I was on the competitive stuff. I was running events for high-level comp play, and it was like, I want to get in on this. And whereas now, I'm like, you know, that's kind of died off to an extent. But also it's like, you know what? Why is it just high level competitive play that gets shown? Why don't we actually just show any event that's being played 
or any event that's being run and promote it and you know promote the hobby through Twitch. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where I've come to in my kind of streaming thinking and processes. So yeah, more than happy to support you as your you know a budding budding streamer like myself and uh, yeah, hoping to make this into a career for yourself as well. Yeah, it's it's fun. I get it. It's kind of interesting how like you do something for yourself and you don't think anything about it. You know, you just kind of like, oh, well, I enjoy doing this and whatever. And then somebody's like, you know, well, what do you like doing? Oh, I like playing video games. I like painting figurines. And what do you mean figurines? And then all of a sudden it it leads into that. And they're just like, well, why don't you stream uh, paint miniatures? I'm like, is is there a thing for that? I mean, I know that when I first was looking around on Twitch, I came across Mango's stream, and apparently he was doing a, a very, very long one. <laughs> so um, I stuck it out with them the entire time, and um, and they were they were a trooper, man. They they stayed till they like painted a hundred and some odd, two hundred and some odd miniatures, and I was like, that's intense. That looks fun. I, I want to try that every so often. So it's definitely a, a, a different venue than what I would have thought to be doing on Twitch. Yeah. For sure. And the community is, is nice too. Like nine, I would say at least nine and a half times out of 10, if you ask a, a person a question or, you know, or they're in your stream and they're talking to you, they're nice as can be. Um, on video games, I found like there can be some very, very mean individuals. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Like even um, one of the guys currently in my chat, Kratos Evolved, like he was in, I think, you joined me last Saturday, didn't you, Kratos? I'm pretty sure. Um, <laughs> uh, and, you know, he was just, he's relatively new to the hobby. Yep. Yep. You confirmed it. And he was just, you know, we're chatting away. He was asking me a bunch of questions and, you know, uh, I'm, I'm the type of person, like, even in my stream title, I'll say, questions welcome. And I just, you know, I'll make it clear and... Uh, ah, and Skeletal Steve also knows Kratos as well. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like, you know, it's one of those things apart uh, about this community, like, asking questions and, you know, asking for tips and hobby advice. Like, I was talking with Burp Dragon earlier, and we were talking about cases and, and you know, case design and... You know, the best way to store minis and, you know, for what they're, they've they got. And so it, it's just that kind of environment that, you know, I think is really unique to, uh, you know, our hobby and our streaming community um, as well. For, just from what I'm finding in general, like, just getting, you know, networks going, or networking going between you know, fellow streamers, getting dual streams, like, all this kind of stuff. It's just, it's awesome networking, and it's, it is so open, which is, which is awesome. Definitely. So, how long have you been, like, kind of consistently streaming for on, on Twitch? Uh, <laughs> um, I don't, I don't remember. Like, it, it hasn't been too awful long, because... Um, like I said, I, I had a situation where, um, I could finally get the kids situated with, with their school and that's kind of when it started. So I would say maybe three months ago, two yep. months ago, okay, maybe a little bit longer. And, um, I started off with, with something simple, something that I thought I, you know, that I do like, but it, um, it was Rocket League, and it it was fun, but it was really hard to pay attention to a fast-paced game and chat at the same time. And those who do it, that's off to them. But uh, I just couldn't do it. And uh, like I said, I, I was just trying out things that, that I could figure out what I could do because I didn't have a webcam either. I just got lucky with the ones that I got uh, recently. And, you know, they're... From a distance, it looks okay, but I can't, they don't do auto zoom or anything up close. So, 
it is has has its downsides. But hey, I mean, everything's a step, right? So yeah, 100%. but as far as paint miniatures, I think I think it's only been maybe I want to say like four or five streams that I've I've started painting and I've seen my numbers go a lot higher, and I've been enjoying it a lot more too. It's not as stressful. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I uh, for myself. I uh, started consistently doing kind of gaming streams or, you know, live streaming games or painting kind of about six weeks ago, um, oh. six, seven weeks ago. And that's where, where it uh, really started to take off. Mango Smasher says, uh, the Ohana is everywhere. You, you'll never know when we are lurking. Yep, 100%, mate. <laughs> 100% lurk. Um which is awesome. So yeah, we're just, uh, you know, it's it's just great. It's just awesome to find like-minded people around that you know you can chat, that can help you out with your stream setup uh, and all that kind of stuff as well. Which is awesome. So uh, yeah. So what are you? Indeed. So you're working on some. Uh, You've got some second edition orcs sitting there, and you're working on some uh, Primaris Space Marines or first gen Space Marines. Uh, Firstborns, one of the. Um, do you remember the little box that they sold that was like a free pack? Yeah. That's that's these guys, <laughs> right here. <laughs> yeah. It's just this guy I happened to have finished a while ago. Um, all but the. All but the washes on them are all craft paint. Yeah. So it came out pretty good. I mean, from a distance, obviously, you're, you're playing pretty far away. It's like, oh, well, at least it looks good. <laughs> yeah, the three-foot rule is is real. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and, and, yeah, Kratos is just agreeing with us, saying, uh, I've never seen a nicer community on Twitch than the mini painters. Right. So, which is awesome. Love them. So much love, man. So much. Yeah. So, am I right in guessing that you're on the East Coast of the States? I am, where all the crap is going down, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> Election crap and, you know, just like you guys, the, the COVID stuff. Yep. Um, I mean... Luckily, we aren't on lockdown just yet. Some places are in the U.S. Um, like to the point of they, someone had said that in their state, they have to have no more than their intermediate family or, or close family to come over for Thanksgiving, and they still have to seat six feet apart. Right. And everybody's like, well, how we... How, how do you fit all these people you know not all but just a small handful of people six feet apart in a in a house it's not not everybody has a mansion yeah it's not so, not necessarily feasible but i mean so far um i'm i'm from virginia so i'm like literally on the water and if i could sail a boat i would probably not try it i'd probably have somebody else sail the boat so I could go to the UK and yep. visit them real quick. <laughs> yes. Well, they the UK. Got it. Do you need any minis? I'm at the at the motherland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the UK actually uh, just went in for a second round of lockdown, um, uh, which is right. yeah, which is unfortunate to see. Um, we've actually been quite fortunate here in Australia, where because I'm in I'm in Canberra, we actually had that first set of lockdowns and then we've actually been relatively good since with only having i think a handful of cases and they're jumping in you know we'll have i think the most recent one was probably about three weeks back and there was a diplomat who was coming from overseas so it's just one of those things we're kind of you know we're quite in a good spot compared to some other states in australia like victoria who were on an extended lockdown for I think they were on lockdown for more than half the year which because they ended up having a second Jeez. wave 
um, and their lockdown went for that second one went for about 12 to 15 weeks holy cow so yeah this, this is one of those things where like growing up when you when you're in grade school, you you always sit there and you hear about this war that happened during this period and the war happening in that period, and then all of a sudden you're just like you feel it like something's gonna happen and you're just like oh it's probably gonna be another war and it's gonna be horrible. You never think that it's gonna be one with one a war that you can't see. You know it's not something you can fight. Yeah. Hand to hand or anything. It's a little scary. <laughs> yes. So. Yeah. So, yeah, it's definitely uh, something that's been, you know, got some people concerned and, you know, that obviously there's been fatalities, which is, you know, we, we never want to see. Um, but, yeah, it's just everyone's just handling it differently and I think that's where it, it just different, differentiates, I think. And, you know... And of course, different countries have different ways of handling it. Like you look at some of the um, Northern Europe countries, they're just like, yeah, nah, no lockdowns. We just go about normal and, you know, they'll they deal, deal with it their way. And then you know, then you got us here in Australia that were like border closures between states and... Um, Know, lockdowns for extended periods and only certain states being allowed into certain states and all this insanity that's been going down and then yeah it's I can't imagine what it's like over there for you guys at least or even for Mango Smasher and the guys over in the UK as well so Um, let's see. I'm I'm glad that you love Rocket League because you and I shared that love immensely. <laughs> let's see. Um, how's the paint, Steve? It's good. It's good. It's just um, the only reason why I'm using my P3 at the moment is because I'm trying to do the highlights on the guns uh, instead of doing a metallic at the moment. I'm trying that out. Um, and then I'm going to try to recreate the uh, on-off theme that I'm doing where uh, this individual has blue pants with a red shirt and then it reverses on the hat where it's a red brim with the blue main portion of the cap and then this guy is yeah the Kratos opposite. I do agree man I, I do agree it's a bit of a mess at the moment for all the gobos so that way it's they're the same but a little bit different and kind of like a checkerboard and I think I'm going to do something like that with the golfs. Um, and those paints are awesome. It's it's still a learning curve to to get them. Um, a word that my wife doesn't like is moist. I got to make sure that they're <laughs> moist enough. <laughs> <laughs> what paints are those ones that you, you're talking about there, um, Steve-O? Um, Mango was gracious enough to sit there and when I won one of his giveaways he was just like he's like what kind of paints are you using I said craft paints he goes no that's not gonna do I said well I, I can't afford the games workshop stuff and he says I got you covered I got a whole box full of them and I was like you're kidding me so he showed me and he goes do you like this color I was like I, before I could even say yes he was just like okay good you're getting it so I have like I think we estimated around like two hundred dollars worth of games workshop paints <laughs> that that I've been using and it's awesome to sit there and go, Mephiston Red, what does that look like? Oh, I got it right here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So but yeah, it's um aside from the small things that I haven't picked up yet, like a white, um, or some colors that are close to what I use for I don't think it really matters on bases because they're going to get blocked anyways. I'll use, you know, craft paint for the bases. But um, they've been awesome. It's just trying to learn uh, the wet, not wet blending, but um, you know the word. I don't know what the 
forward. And it's where you're trying to water them down to where it doesn't gloop up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I getcha. So the consistency of the paint when you're using it. That's right. And that's why Australians and the British are a lot smarter than Americans. Because <laughs> we can't get our words together. <laughs> Look, there are some Aussies that can't even put together a coherent sentence at times, so I don't think we're much better. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm being completely honest. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so I'm slowly getting through these Inceptors. It's just taking, taking some time. Burp, it wasn't directly referring to you, bud. <laughs> <laughs> the, um... Do, 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 do. I'm trying to catch up with chat. Yeah, so am I. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. As long as it's yeah, it was $250. Yes, they will get used. I promise. Um... Come on, baby, you have it to use that dang... Yes, I did have to use that dang... Rude, you got to agree, though. There is... Uh, but, sorry. There are some people that are is just... on the back of my chair, oh. and her paw is touching me. I just... Sure that I'm still didn't there. learn English correctly, unfortunately. You want to say hi, Echo? Echo. Yeah, she's passed out. She's charging up for the night where she's going to keep me awake all night. <laughs> Um, let's see, what else? Okay, so, um, have you built any of your own terrain and taken it to the place of, uh, like, do you, do would you donate terrain or do you keep the terrain that you make or have you made any terrain? Um, so, yeah, so when I was younger and my dad was helping me out with hobby, we would make our own terrain. Uh, more as of late, I've gotten into, like, MDF kits and that kind of stuff. Um, and I, I do have my own store of terrain, because I've got my own gaming table, um, that my dad was able to make me, because he's a carpenter. Um, he was able to make that for me for my birthday a couple of years back, um, which is awesome. Um, and so I've got, and also being a tournament organiser, it's you know, behooved of me to, you know, if I expect others to bring terrain for events, which is pretty consistent here in Australia in terms of how things are run, we don't have massive stores of terrain like what events like Adepticon and Overopen have got over in the States. Um, we generally uh, community source the terrain for events. Um, okay. So it was like, no, nah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build up my own store and have some tables myself. So... I've got currently three uh, gaming mats and I think it's four tubs of terrain that is actually built. I need to go through and repaint a bunch of it and do bases for the other half that isn't getting repainted. And then I've been slowly working on the uh, excess stuff that I've got sitting there in another tub. So that's probably going to end up being like six tubs worth of terrain. Which will probably consistently oh, cover maybe four tables worth. Jeez. So, yeah. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. Most of it's like the old GW... Well, actually, the half that needs the bases on it is the old um, GW-style terrain because that stuff was a lot... I, I think that stuff was, despite the moulds and their, you know, the bunch of... Um, mold lines on them um was actually really malleable in terms of how you put them together what you put them together as as well uh, that's what i liked about them i'm not the biggest fan of the newer kits because they're you know the scale's <laughs> quite big and you know it's like five inches between levels whereas the other stuff's only three um so and then i've got a bunch of they don't make it anymore which is a shame but the ITC, uh, the Frontline Gaming's ITC uh, Urban Terrain, I've got a bunch of that stuff as the other side of all the MDF kits. And I, I've got, uh, I think, four kits sitting there that need to be assembled. 
I've got a couple of kits that are assembled that need to be painted. And I'm going to pretty much rattle can the stuff that is unassembled um, and parts of the stuff that is assembled as well because that's the way that they did it and I didn't do it initially and I tried with the airbrush and MDF just soaks up paint like nobody's business. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I'm like, nah, screw it. I'm not going to do it that way again. I'm going to seal it first with a, a sealant and then undercoat it and then do the colours over the top. And I found some really nice water-based acrylic um, spray paints from an office supply store um, that they produce. Uh, not that they produce, that they sell. And I've got to order those when I end up getting to the terrain. I'm hoping to... <laughs> some point next year do a full terrain day and just awesome. smash through it so yeah what about yourself how's you know have you got your own terrain do you make some of your own stuff what's the go um i'm learning how to make terrain um watching a whole bunch of videos yeah I, but that's awesome I was man making better money i just went and bought gw stuff and it is fun I didn't know anything about the MDF stuff until later, so I never bought any, uh, which I'm very enticed now. <laughs> it was just it's like, oh, there's another way to get terrain. I get. Um, but uh, I've watched a few videos, and uh, I think the only thing I've actually made um, was literally it was just an upside down cup. <laughs> And I painted it to make it look like it was a, a lookout point. And I have, like, the um, Dark Angels insignia on the front of it. It's really cheesy looking, but I tried. <laughs> hey, there are there are um, other hobbyists that haven't given it a crack, so, you know, <laughs> more power to ya. It is fun, though. Like, whether it's, whether it's MDF or plastic or whatever, it's... It's very fun. I, my only concern is like with the stuff that I have or that I make. I know that if I mess it up, it's like, oh, whatever. It's I can find something lying around and make something else. But I get really nervous when it's something I bought, kind of like these miniatures that take me forever to paint. So I'm like, I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> yeah. The the biggest thing I'd suggest then is just follow the instructions and make sure you, <laughs> you especially with MDF. Uh, dry fit um, it all together if you're able to before you um, actually glue it in place. So. Um, Kratos, thank you very much for the follow. Wait, how am I not followed? <laughs> it's all right. Um, Mango says, uh, pink hair, pink hair, the fans demand it, as does the council. <laughs> That's why I have blonde hair. So, um, you're in luck, everyone, because it would have been Saturday before my pink dye came in. But because of the strings being pulled by Mango and the love that you guys are sharing with me tonight, that's why, that's why I put that uh, Warhammer thing up there. It's going pink. Super, <laughs> super pink, as y'all requested. So, um, if you don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and get this goop in my hair. If you don't mind, just talking to the peoples for me, Scotty, so that I can come back and show you that it's actually in my hair. And then we'll see the final product uh, when I get it rinsed out. Yeah, no worries at all, brother. More than happy to. Awesome. I'm guessing that's just a bit of a that was a goal set for um, getting to 50 followers. Yes, actually it was. Um, I sat there and I was like, I was like, I want to, I want to do something fun, something that that a few other people have done. Miss Mango, she got her hair dyed green. Barky got his beard dyed blue, and I was like, so what color? And of course, my wife and Sparky both said pink. And nobody objected to it. So, <laughs> here we go. Alrighty. Um, I will be back in a few moments. Yeah, it's too easy, brother. I'll keep these guys entertained, hopefully. <laughs> oh, I believe in you. <laughs> uh, I, I 
can't do it. I got the headphones on, baby. Okay, I'm going to unplug the headphones and then put myself on mute so that no reverb happens. But that way y'all can see it actually happening. Sounds good. Uh, I, I know that feeling. I was considering doing a similar thing. So one of the other guys, um, old, um, I got him to being at 50 followers and his challenge was to shave off his beard. Now, as you can see, I'm a bearded gentleman as well. But not as big a beard as him. So, I did consider getting my own beard cut off. Um, but I, uh, yeah, no, I decided not to. Uh, because I managed to get there without uh, having to set a, a goal like that for myself. Uh, plus, my, uh, my wife would have uh, been very upset because she absolutely hates the idea of me without a beard. She reckons I'd be too baby-faced. And to that I say, Pleh. As if. Uh, but no, I hope you, hope you guys are enjoying hanging out. You know, if you're in uh, Skeletal Stevo's chat, if you're enjoying hanging out with... You know, I hope you're enjoying hanging out with myself. You know, if you're in my chat, I hope you're enjoying hanging out with Skeletal Steve as well. Uh, it's great to be able to do a dual stream and hang out and... You know, chat hobby uh, you know what we're working on and projects and stuff like that it's just been really awesome and it just exemplifies what this this streaming community is all about uh, which is awesome and I'm sure mango smasher would agree um, I believe he's still yeah he's still working in chat same as Spartacan. Um so no nah, it's just absolutely awesome um, to just be able to uh, you know work together if if you haven't already gone over and liked uh skeletal steve -O, i do encourage you to do so uh i'm gonna pop a command in chat um for it and then the mango smasher i got this uh suggestion from you mate um this command Um, so hopefully this works. Yeah, there we go. So you can ever head over to his channel and uh, ah. So you're just hanging out doing your own hobby in a in another Discord as well. Awesome, bud. Um. So yeah, no, it's it's great. <laughs> so yeah, if you have it, head over to his channel, drop him a follow. Uh, it's been it's been great hanging out with him so far. Um, so yeah, and I hope you guys are enjoying the content. I hope that we're able to get the uh, the base coats fully done on these guys today, at least for my stream. Um, which is going to be awesome, um, even if it's not, even if it's only just one coat, um, that's, I still count that as progress, so, it's just getting it there, and you know, slowly chipping away is the, is the plan, the war on grey plastic is never, en is a never ending war that I'm fighting, so, maybe one day I, I won't have to fight it, but I doubt it. I highly, highly doubt it. So. I think after I do the red, I think I'm going to need to do some, some bone. And then, I think that's going to be about it for the base coats. At least the first Passover of them. So yeah, Kratos, what's been happening, mate? As uh, Skeletal Steve is doing, he's getting his hair dyed pink. What's been happening, bud? How's your week been? 
you know, what have you, have you been working on? Any hobby? Uh, you know, how you doing? Yeah, sick. It's awesome, dude. Oh, dude, that's awesome. Well, happy birthday for, for Sunday, your time. Um, that, that'd that be sick. What what set are you planning on getting? Is it the... Uh, were we talking about it? We were talking about it last week, weren't we? It was the Elite, wasn't it? Or it was the Command. One of the two. Um... Yes! Yep. Yeah. Is the paint kit. That's right. Nah, awesome, man. I, uh, I'm quite tempted to pick up the Necron one. To test out my Necron colour scheme on there. So. Um. Which doesn't use any of the paints in the box. But, um, I will probably, uh, end up grabbing it to test out the, the Necron Warrior. Well, it's not coming up on my side yet for Steve-O. <laughs> he's, uh, he's starting the process of it, though. <laughs> oh, he just put up, here we go. So he's going to start uh, getting his hair dyed pink. And it's going to be fun to see that as well. Um, but yeah. Oh, I've got some, I have some funny stories about hair dyes, actually. So my middle brother, when he was 15, if my memory serves me right, decided to uh, try and bleach his hair um, so it'd be blonde however because he's got like relatively dark black hair dark brown black hair it, it didn't go to blonde it instead went to orange so he was a ranger for about six months So, um, and it was quite funny, and yeah, I had a good laugh at him for that, <laughs> but, you know, oh yeah, that is gonna be bright pink, <laughs> if, you, if you're not haven't got Skeletal Steve's uh, stream up. You should uh, pull it up and see what his uh, hair is looking like because it is looking pink. Oh, Kratos, were you trying to send a link? Let me... Uh... Ah, oh, caps, yeah. Yeah, Nightbot's a bit finicky. I just, you know. I try to keep caps out of it just because, you know, sometimes people can take that as saying stuff in anger. Um, you know, on social media and stuff. That's the reason why I've got that there. So, it just helps people not escalate situations if they get in arguments and such. Which hasn't happened yet, but it's just a precautionary measure. So. Because I just saw a wall of message delete, message delete, message delete, message delete. And I'm like, ah. What's, what's going on there? Yeah, nah. Yeah, I don't know why. It, oh, I think I know what it's done. 
I think because you tried to send it once, it then deleted all your previous messages. That's probably what happened. Nightbot's done a done a mass delete. It's probably just a setting on Nightbot I have to fix, so. It is what it is, I'm afraid. At least at the moment, and then I'll change it. And <laughs> And Skeletal Steve-O's face is, uh, he's looking like he's enjoying getting the pink in his hair. <laughs> um, so. But, yeah. Um, alright, cool. So. <laughs> he just put on a post-it note to help. <laughs> on there. So. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, oh, it's, it's hilarious. It's good fun. All in good fun, chat. Um, so. Alrighty. I think I've just got the Shakti Bone and the Red of the Purity Seals to go, actually. So I still need the Red. Um, but yeah. Hope you guys are having a a good afternoon or evening or morning wherever you are in the world um. I know it's probably what it's getting around midnight for you isn't it mango I'm getting close to it Oh gosh. <laughs> right, okay, 2 a.m. Goodness me. Alright, I'm well off on that. Um, okay, I need to be better educated about my time zones. So. Oh yeah, because it's 1 o'clock and you guys are 13. Ah. Uh, Oh, I'm trying to think of, think of the math here. Yeah, you guys are 11 hours behind us. So. Alright, I think... I've just got to do your shop bow. That's where I'm at. And this pot is... Slowly dying, I think. But it's getting there. Um, so do a nice watered down layer of this guy to go over the top. I've already done the, the brown over the uh, the purity seals to kind of get it in that colour color sphere. So. Hopefully. It, sh it won't fully cover, but it'll mean that I'll be able to do a second coat. And not need it as thick as I previously would do. Because the brown. But yeah. How's the uh, internet situation going for you, Mango? Is it still being a, a bit of a pain or? Has it decided to fix itself up? Apparently. 
and the kids are not allowed in the videos. Ah! Terms of service. I know you. Oh. How's the hair feeling? Is the hair skeletal safe? Uh, it actually smells good. It's weird. You would think that hair dye wouldn't smell good, but it does. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Ah! Fine, Mango! Cat! The missus is really worried now. She's like, you just. You just got 50 followers plus, and now uh, we messed it up because we put the kids in there. And I was like, we didn't have any control over the kids. They ran out, saw the pink hair, and then saw that I was streaming. But only I can't tie them up. <laughs> yeah, no. But it, it is what uh, it is. Nah, sh you should be fine. Like I, I've seen, like I'm not sure if you'd be you'd know this streamer, but Dr. Lupo. He's a, he's another, he's a relatively prominent video game streamer, mainly on Escape from Tarkov. Um, and every so often, when he when he's streaming, his son will pop in on him. So it's not too, too big of a thing. I think it just depends on the the context and circumstances, I suppose. So I think he'd be fine, to be honest. Alicorn says it's normal smell, like um. Babe, how, what would you say it smelled like? Like something fruity? Baby. I don't know where she went to. Uh, to me, it smelled like it was something fruity. Yeah, mango. It wasn't like, yeah, that know, sucks. obviously bleach or uh, a different color that I've used before. It just smelled good. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Dude. Yeah. I'm not sure if... Fine. Yeah. I'm not sure if you <laughs> heard my story that I was sharing of my uh, middle brother um with with chat steve but pretty much my uh he tried to bleach uh blonde his hair however he was very his hair is like dark brown black and so instead of going to this bleached blonde it went to ranga went orange was, oh so he turned into a scot <laughs> yeah <laughs> It was, yeah, it was, oh man, it was crazy. <laughs> it, it was hilarious. But that was, was when he was like 15. And now like, what is he? He's like, oh, I think he's like 23, 24 in March, I believe. Um, and you can see there are, there are parts of his beard that it's, he's got orange hairs. So that's, you know, <laughs> the, the genetics of the way the bleach just happened to impact his hair um, meant that it just went orange Dude. instead. It wasn't any fault of the bleach, it was just his genetics. <laughs> <laughs> Which is hilarious. That's awesome. So. <laughs> but yeah, I just um, just finished all the, the first layer of base coats on these guys. Sweet. Which is cool. Um, except I need to do all the... Uh, little basing vignettes which I'm not going to do yet I'll leave those until after I've fully painted each of the dudes but I'm actually really happy with how these guys have come out um, paint wise um, I'm glad that I didn't leave the backpacks on I, I blue tacked them on so I can take them off to paint them Ooh. Cause... That's what I got to do. I got to learn the method of not always putting a model together completely, but taking parts off of like captains and stuff, mm. and then really getting into the nitty gritty of it. Because I, I hate when I want to spend time on a model, and then all of a sudden, an arm's in a way, a gun's in the way, something like that, and I've already super glued it, and I'm like, ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's something I learned as well very early. Not very early on, it was actually um, by the magnetizing side of things that I learnt how to paint by sub-assemblies, and I've just really never gone back. Um, so, just makes things a lot easier, for me at least, when I'm doing it. Um, it's also like, 
choosing the right block brush to paint the right part like I'm about to paint the eyes and so I was about to do like my base coat highlighting brush when I don't want that I want my character brush where I'm able to get in with a nice fine point and get in there and control it a lot better Now, uh, speaking of uh, paint brushes, is there anything that you would suggest for different tiers of painting, like a uh, beginner uh, to a um, intermediate painter to a more professional painter? Yeah, so I suppose there's always the, the high tier is probably the easiest ones to start with, and they would be your Windsor and Newtons um, for, your, for your professional level painting. They're like top of the range um they're the best ones they're expensive but it's well worth it with the Windsor and Newtons um in terms of your intermediate to beginner brushes I used to use Citadel brushes but then I've recently swapped over to Army Painter brushes and I find they're actually a lot better so and they're not as expensive for some of their brushes as well so they're kind of the two that I'd recommend. Go an army painter for your, your initial to start off because you've got the red, you've got red ones like these guys that you can use for like base coats and that kind of stuff. And then you've got the white triangular ones that you can use for your more detail style work um, as well that I use. So awesome. Yeah, I um, I bought a small army painter starter set, and the the brush I was uh, again, I'm I'm one of those fearful painters where I don't, I'll have something nice and I don't want to use it because I'm afraid I'm gonna mess it up somehow, mm. and um, and so I kept it in the box for ages, and I just started using using it, and actually the the triangular design that they have on these things is actually comfortable to hold on to. Yeah. So. And I know that Mango had bought some off of Amazon, I think, him and Sparky. And they were had a flat spot on it. And they said it was very comfortable. Mm. So. Yeah, but so the you don't want the orange to be Let's overlapping. See, have here? You want it the other way. Um, um, so you want some space between the orange. Trying to steal my cat. Because then you're able to. to I said, no, you do it. Have. A little bit of foam yeah, in between. It it's kind of that. <laughs> um, oh my God, the when they touch, the TV like you want like, a bit of space between, the big TV so that the then, oh, well, otherwise, when you submit it, the battle foam guys yeah, will come back to you and ask you, I like, think? we need to change this because so if, there's not enough space, or there's not enough space in between different be slots. Best, if that so makes that sense. I can be like, bam, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> um, let's see. Do you, um since. If, if, if you, let's just say that quarantine happens to knock on your door, um, do you do anything to try to stay in the hobby in any shape or form, like, um, aside from painting? So, like, uh, Dawn of War video games, or um, maybe some type, like, tabletop simulator with friends? Uh, um, so, along those lines? for me, it was... Like, when we did, and if we will go for a second round, hypothetically, um, it was very much a lot of painting, for the most part, and video games was what I was balancing it with. I, I'm very much a first-person shooter fan, um, but I do also, I do, there's a new game that I got into because of one of the streamers that I was watching called Hades, and it's a roguelike game, and I've been playing that. Um... But in terms of, like, 40k-related stuff, yeah, Dawn of War, I'd go back and I'd play through there. Um, I've got all the original ones, so not Dawn of War 2 or Dawn of War 3. I've got Dawn of War 1, Dawn of War 1, Winter Assault, Dark Crusade, and Soulstorm. I absolutely love those Ooh. games. Um, so I'd go back and play through those. I might even stream them. Um, and I never really got into Tabletop Simulator the first time. Like, I'd, I'd enjoy spending time watching other people play and just chatting with my mates, but I wouldn't play myself. <laughs> so I'd still be a part of it that way. And then 
if we were at a level where we could have people over, then I'd invite someone over every so often for a game at my place on my gaming table because I have the capacity to do that. So, so yeah, that's that's kind of what my strategy would be going into another lockdown if it did ever so happen to occur. Yeah, I've, I've, I've seen the it, tabletop simulator, simulator does look awesome, but I'm so much like uh, Miss Mango, where me and tech don't always mash up. Um, so having to download this or to open that program or whatever have you, I, th I think I'd get more lost and frustrated before I even started the game. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's fair. I, uh... Let's see. Let's see, uh, Spartacan, so, steve -O, what are you working on as we can't see? Oh, crapola. We got to change the view? Like yeah, I got so used to being in the limelight. That, um, the I've done that a few times myself. Don't stress. <laughs> Because I've got I've got my camera that's directly over where I'm working, and then I've got my uh, camera off to my left that's on the top of my TV screen as my second monitor that I can have as full screen as chat seeing right now, or as that that's also got it. And I, there are times where I've been talking with chat directly about something, and then um, I forget to change it back when I go back to painting. So you're not <laughs> you, you're not alone in that, my man. You're not alone in that. <laughs> Um, uh, to answer your question, currently I'm, because it was kind of like a last minute thing of you pulling out four golfs to see how they would look, um, I'm using the P3, uh, Frostbite to put the base coat on, so it's as close to gray as possible, and then, um, while they're drying, I'm gonna finish up the Gretchen hats and the guns, and they should be good to go. Um, let's see. What else is a good, a good topic there? Um, so playing, any, any tips for when you play 40k and there happens to be, um, a new individual that comes into the shop and they're like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm kind of interested in the game. Um, how would you go about it personally? So that maybe others out there that uh, are interested in the game would go about asking their local uh, gaming store, or hobby store, you know, the pleasantries, if you will, to, to get a game going. So in terms of like starting up a new community or are you looking to... Yeah, yeah, like you see like two people playing, like yourself and your friend playing and this new guy comes up and they're just kind of eyeing the whole process, mm, okay. you know, if... If they came up to you and was like, hey, well, you know, what's this? You know, what would be your steps to try to get them into the hobby? Right. So, <laughs> funnily enough, and I haven't told my chat this yet either, I'm actually oh. writing a book um, that is specifically around building communities, running events, and running tournaments. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get the cat out of the bag. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine, it's fine. It was going to come out at some point. Um... <laughs> Just a surprise it was so soon. Because um, that's a part of this, the, <laughs> the plan is with the streaming, like I'm helping to build my platform for that. <laughs> um, so yeah, like pretty much my kind of thoughts of that is you want to have a brief idea or, you know, a, a kind of a brief spiel about what the game at its core, what the lore is all about. The, the setting, the armies that are involved, uh, you know, kind of, why why you're playing a war game based in this universe and what's actually going on uh so you want to have that down pat and then pretty much you gauge it from there if they go okay cool how does the game work then you start to go okay cool uh for the gameplay you know each player brings a different army um you know they agree on how large the armies are going to be when they're playing um you know and we use dice and tape measures and each different unit has their own profiles that we use and 
their own weapons to interact and, you know, shoot at enemy units or get into hand-to-hand -hand combat. They kind of explain it like that. And so, and, and you generally just go in small steps because you could give the spiel of the universe and someone could go, oh, I'm not really, like, into that kind of stuff. I'm more into, like, the fantasy side of things. And you go, okay, cool. And you can briefly, I know you've got a fantasy background, so you could talk about a little bit about Age of Sigmar and say, you know, well, if you're in a fantasy, there's uh, a game called Age of Sigmar. You know, it's you know based more in a high fantasy style and you can go a bit more into detail and if they're like oh yeah cool then you know if you know of people that do play that game or you've got a community at the local store that does play age of sigma or there's a facebook group for them direct them to there so then they're able to find and go hey i'm interested in getting involved in age of sigma you know when's the local game night for it etc etc so it's more about just taking small steps in a conversation with them rather than going Oh, this is what for you know this game's will have 40k we're playing 2000 point game you know we're rolling dice and tape measures against each other and not really giving more of a background around the game itself awesome so yeah, it's... yeah i always always trip up on um i'm trying to explain it to somebody because you know people that see the stuff that you you post also they may show an interest in it by just saying, you know, hey, you know, that looks really good. What is it from? And I always get my, my tongue twisted on how to describe it because there's just so much. There's lore, there's painting, there's building, there's all kinds of avenues that you can go about um, with the hobby that you kind of want to put it all together. You don't want to put it all together so that it's not too much for somebody. And then I, I personally get my words all mixed up. So this would be an awesome thing. So keep keep an eye out on on this book that's going to be made by an awesome author. <laughs> Thanks, man. I've uh, I've written ten thousand words of it so far, and I've I've taken a little bit of a, a break from writing it, but I'll plan on getting back to it. Um, it'll be it won't just be all about you know how to introduce new people to the hobby. It'll be things like how to deal with. Uh, you know, particularly tough people in a community, you know, if someone's having a, you know, a dispute with another player or, you know, someone's just not really gelling with the community in general and how to deal with that, um, you know, from how to define running events and, you know, software and it'll be very much, there'll be a lot of, like, lists and, you know, examples and all that kind of stuff, so... That's that's kind of the direction it's going. I'm wanting to, you know, share my experience and share my hobby stuff, um, my hobby knowledge and my event management knowledge with other people and, and, you know, what I think is best practice and, you know, how to avoid bad situations but also how to resolve situations between players and, yeah, whole, whole, whole heaps of stuff. So... Awesome. But yeah, it's something that, you know, kind of came out from a conversation I was having with a friend of mine, and he was writing a book as well, and yeah, just kind of steamrolled that I could write one. And yeah. <laughs> awesome. So. That is no easy task. I mean, you think book, and it's just like, oh, I could do that, and then you start start looking at that, that blank page, like they always say, and you're just kind of like, oh, it's a little bit tougher than I thought. <laughs> yeah. So, it takes a lot of patience. So It does. You, yeah, thanks, man. It, it does definitely take a lot of patience, a lot of time, um, and investment into writing it. But I think it's, you know, something that the community at large will actually be able to benefit from. Because it's, you know... I, I, you know, we see so many blogs, or, you know, you've got Bell Lost Souls, Spiky Bits, you see so many... That come up with, you know, they talk about, oh, there's this event coming up and they did this wrong and, or this was handled poorly. And it's just like, well, instead of actually like just saying what was done wrong, why hasn't someone come up with kind of a, a, a standard of, you know, what should be done of the best practice for events and, 
So that's that's kind of where that idea came from because you know you can see all these different issues that come out of tournaments and events and you know and they and sometimes they repeat year on year or sometimes they um, change you know the same issue might happen but might be two completely different people the following year and it's like well okay they haven't resolved this issue and it could be something down to how they do judging or you know how they handle bad interactions between other players and so it's just one of those things where it's you know some guidance i think you know is is going to be quite welcomed and you know it's not just going to be my own writing i'm planning on asking quite veteran uh you know and experienced people to to you know speak into it and also um um you know do interviews with them you know guys like um reese and frankie out of frontline gaming to talk about you know how they organize such large events so successfully and so smoothly um all the way down to guys like carl tuttle from the independent characters um you know about community building and how he goes about you know getting introducing new guys to his community and growing the, the, the his local area so hey awesome that's that's kind of the the vision statement of it i would say Awesome. Uh, but yeah, it's it definitely uh definitely will take time though, and I want to get more <laughs> experience and you know it's not just going to be something oh yeah I've got a couple of years now nah, I want to as I'm still doing it I want to consistently be still um you know working on stuff, and then Mango Smash has said the latest post in the Discord is going to be Steve-O's commission. What? <laughs> Let's have a look. Ah, oh, nice! That's looking awesome! I like the head swap. I, I don't particularly like them without the heads, to be honest. I reckon it looks better with the heads. That's awesome. So, <laughs> alright, that's the second layer of gold done, um, what's next, we're probably going to do a second layer of red, and we'll probably end up doing a second layer of green and probably the Shafty Bone as well. And then it'll be up to touch-ups. So we're getting there. <laughs> we're getting there. <laughs> you can see my mind process going when I, uh, you know, when I talk through what I'm actually doing for painting and so. It's the best part. Yeah. That's when you know somebody's real. <laughs> yes. You know, something that you know, if you share your thought process, then someone can learn from it and understand why you're doing what you're doing and yeah so a little follow along and i was just like oh well if you happen to have this color this is what i'm using today <laughs> yeah in in some <laughs> regard so so yeah i'm really really glad that i'm getting a lot of progress done on these guys quickly at the moment. Compared to the Death Watch, I'm seeing some some progress are a lot quicker. The Death Watch is just so detailed in the minis, which is awesome. But also there, you know demotivating factor sometimes it's just there's so much detail to to work on whether it's the the pouches and the the bullet loops on their chest or 
<laughs> all the different filigrees. And yeah, it's insane. But I will say, I uh, earlier this year I worked on a Venerable Dreadnought, painted it up as a Death Watch Venerable Dreadnought, and I absolutely loved it. I loved every minute of painting that Ven Dread kit as a Death Watch dude. Um, it was just so satisfying and rewarding um, seeing, because I did it in sub-assemblies as well, but it was like getting different pieces to different, you know, stages and, you know, different effects going and, yeah. There's just something about making progress and seeing a final result come together of something that you thought might look good and then seeing it and it actually looks awesome. Um, you know, there's something about that that just makes you want to keep on going and keep on painting. Agreed. So. Like these, these Gretchen, I had no clue what color I was going to use. I was just like, I'm going to pick these two and see how it looks with this one on top, this one on bottom. And then it turned out that I was like, oh, wait, maybe I want to do that. And it just, oh, such a good feeling, especially like they look so derpy when you first start, <laughs> you know? And when you go to paint something, sometimes you, you go to try something new and it's just like, oh, I uh, hope I did this right. <laughs> and then later you find out, yeah, this is good. <laughs> There's a, one of the um, commission painter um, the, uh, class groups that I listen, that, uh, not necessarily listen to, that I know of through the Independent Characters podcast, um, CK Studios. There's always some, they say that there's always an ugly phase that a model goes through. <laughs> and I think that I'm at that ugly phase because of all the base coats. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, and I've also been keeping an eye on your followers, uh, not followers, on your viewers as well. You've got a concurrent form, my friend, happening at the moment. No. Which Can you... I shark them for the next stream? No. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going anywhere. I need you for next stream. <laughs> <laughs> uh it's it's uh it's awesome. What I'll what I'll end up doing then, I'll uh I'll make sure that my stream, whenever you're streaming next, it'll host you as well. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, I'll have to... Situated. So but then Cause yeah. I'd love to I'd love to see you hit affiliate um by the end of the month. Let's see, uh, we have Miss Mango. I need an easy guide to all mini related talking. Tell Mango it's like you lot are talking a different language to me. Alicorn says, Yeah, I agree. Speak English. Alicorn, what, what are not speaking English? They are. <laughs> What would you like to? Not as, what would they like to have yeah, distilled it's not down? Hard to think. <laughs> so I'd, I'd be happy to to simplify it down to be in a bit more of layman's terms if necessary. <laughs> That's I, I'm more than happy to happy to do that to help them out if they would like. Oh, Mango's just sent me a, me a message in my chat saying that you're already going to be affiliate after this stream. We hope. hope. Yes. The, concur <laughs> the concurrent three viewers is a thing. It's it's a tricky and a fickle mistress. Um, mine, uh... It, t it took a bit of time, so... Because I had to wait for two of my older streams to rotate out before I got actually notified. Um, it took... Probably about an hour for them to actually fully rotate out um, on 
mine when I did it, and then I didn't even get the notification straight away. I had to actually log out and log back in. What? Yeah, I had to I had to log out, log back in, and then the notification was there. Um, because it's a bit of a known error for the that that the achievement doesn't unlock. Um. Uh, but so the light I'm using is actually one from Bunnings, funnily enough. So for your reference, Steve, Bunnings is like Home Depot for us over here in Australia. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, what I will do is I will get a link for you, Bert, of the light, and I will post it in chat. Um. Because it's, it's an LED desk lamp. It only cost me about 40 bucks as well. Um, so. Ah, here it is, 35. I'll have to give myself permission to send a link because otherwise Nightbot won't like me. <laughs> but you know that's that's not what for you. Um, we're gonna go with so then my channel. Yours. I'm gonna make sure that's muted, otherwise I'll get feedback. But nobody's business. And then, <laughs> all right, I will allow that. <laughs> Um, yeah. Oh, no, you might as come on. That one right there for you. But, that's the one I use. And it's only 35 bucks. So, I can kind of show you here. Yeah, I'm, I need to get a second one, actually. Um, but, this one's really good. Because you can actually control how bright it is. So, that's fully... I can change... You can change how bright it is. And then you've got three different modes. So, I've got it on um, the middle mode. But, you've also got warm light and cool light. So, and it's just the different LED strips in there that um, are on. So, when it's, the light that I'm using on stream right now is when it's both at the same time. So, it's both cool light and warm light coming out of it. So, it's, it's definitely good. Um, you know, height-wise, like, because of the camera, I want it past the camera. Otherwise, it would be, you know, down here. Um... I've just got a box, uh, a box sitting underneath it to give it a bit more ele elevation. That's the only other problem is that it's not too tall, but um, there's easier ways to fix it. You, you just get something to sit underneath, and it'll be a bit taller for you. Yeah, yeah, that's that's why I went to Bunnings. Because uh, there was a lot of different options that weren't the greatest um, in my research that were similar to this. But, as you said, three times the cost. So. But, yeah. I hope, I hope that that helps you out, Burp. That you're able to grab that guy and uh, do some awesome painting with it. I know that that lamp has done wonders for me and my space. Um, <laughs> so. And speaking of lights, what lighting setup do you have, Steve-O? Um, let's see. I have, I have two clip-on lamps. One happens to be uh, the use of a, of a normal size house bulb. And it's kind of like, like a reading lamp, I guess. 
and I just have it pointed up. So I have like not not the intensity, the full intensity of the light on my face. It's just away. And then the other one I bought is this weird combo where it holds your cell phone and it's like a makeup light. It's just, the light is only about yay big. And it's got three different settings where you can, you know, you can turn it down if you want. You can turn it up. Um, and then there's different, like this is more blue. This is more bright white. And then this is more of a, a dampened. And it, it works. I mean, you can bend it any which way, whatever. I can't remember how much I paid for either one, because one I've had for years, like since I was a kid, and it's still working. And the, the newest one that holds your cell phone, I want to say it was in the $20 area, because most of my stuff here is pretty cheap. My two cameras, one cost me 20 bucks. It came with a scratcher. I got ten dollar Amazon card, and so it made the other one twelve bucks or eight or ten bucks. The um, the lighting, like I said, was about about twenty bucks. My microphone setup was about forty bucks. So I'm not spending like big dollar bills over here either. You know, just doing whatever I can do to find a good sale or a good deal. Yeah, and uh, make it work. The, I think the only thing that I'm doing that might not be in uh, in in ready readiness of, of some uh, is that I have a three monitor step system and I bought that ages ago because I was not gonna play World of Warcraft on just one monitor I had to have the whole panoramic thing and so it's actually resting on one of the arms for the monitors. Yeah, nice. So if you can find something to to act as that arm or something to, to latch it to, I think it's pretty good lighting. It's not the best, but it's pretty good for the price. Yeah. No, so. cool, cool, man. I, uh, I, I just, as soon as you mentioned the three monitor setup, I was like, I'm definitely envious now. I, I'd love to have a three monitor setup. <laughs> The best I can do is have my laptop on and my tower and use uh, uh, mouse, uh, Microsoft Mouse Without Borders. So I could go across both with the one mouse and keyboard. So, which st still works. Don't mind. This is currently my setup where I have three monitors. And then the mic here. And on the back arm, hopefully I can do this without br making it too bright, but it's latched onto the arm for one of the monitors. And then the same for this one back here. It's kind of latched on there. Yeah. And that's about it. My, and I'm going to tell you honestly, um, all of my monitors have come from a, from a thrift store. My computers come from a thrift store. Um, the only thing that hasn't come from a thrift store, is, aside from the items mentioned, is my video card. And that one, again, I, I bought when I actually had decent money. But aside from that, a lot of my hand stuff is either cheap or secondhand. Mm. It's all about saving that dollar so you can buy more minis. That is true. <laughs> We are in the business of plastic crack. <laughs> oh my! Yeah, no, I, I, I got um, I do need to get a a new PC rig at some stage in the next couple of years, because this one I've got's a couple of years old, but it, it was I got it primarily for uni, um, so I did I graduated with a bachelor degree in architecture, um. <laughs> two years ago and so i got this thing and it was it's it's beefy because i was doing all the rendering and all the stuff i needed to in the cad software and now it's my gaming pc and my streaming pc <laughs> and it's like this thing can run like games that are coming out currently and still keep up in terms Holy of the cow. graphics quality and everything like it's running like 
it's running dual graphics cards in there, so that's why. But um, it's you know, it's, it's nothing to sneeze at. Um, but you know, it's you want better performance. You know, you gotta gotta get some upgraded gear. And it's it's not like I'm gonna go and I'm gonna buy the latest uh, you know bloody two thirty nineties because you know we know how rare they are at the moment. Um, but it's going to be like, okay, cool, I'll get, you know, maybe a 2080 and, a, you know, maybe two 2080s because, you know, they're probably, you know, coming down in price from people wanting to sell them off second hand and, you know, that kind of stuff. Indeed. So, it's just more about being smart and knowing what you want to use it for and the capacity that you're, you're needing it for. Um, so... That's, that's one of my, um, I'm just going to say moist dreams, so that way uh, my wife can get a little irritated again. <laughs> um, but uh, is to have that um, dual video card. Oh, I could only imagine. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's great, because instead of running all both my monitors off my CPU, I'm running one off one of the graphics cards instead <laughs> so it does it does make things quite a lot easier in terms of that regard in terms of your system being able to handle a lot more things I find but yeah it's gotten me by and it continues to do so so What else? Um, okay, how about a really weird question, as in, what is one army that you feel, even if somebody paid for all of them, you, would, you wouldn't play? Like, 40k, Fantasy, or Age of Sigmar, rather. Um, if there was one army that you just can't stand either painting or playing which one do you think it would be and it's no offense to those who happen to like it we're just we're just curious what your interests are yeah um oh gosh i think i think this is going to go back to being an old grudge of mine and it's going to be tyranids <laughs> Ooh. Um, that's I, funny you say that because that's mine too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I don't know. There's just something about them that I just don't enjoy. Um, you know, whether it's playing against them or you know, just the way they interact. Like it seems very much like, all right, cool. We're just gonna move stupid amount of inches and then charge you in one phase it's like oh sick that's that's fun yeah. not, not really but anyway um and you know they've got back when like this this dislike also comes from the the period of time where flying hive tyrants were actually flying and so you only hit them on sixes when anything that didn't have sky fire um yeah <laughs> so it's like you run into an army that's running three of those guys with the dual devourers and it's like oh oh cool that's that's awesome don't particularly want to face <laughs> that now do i um <laughs> being a marine player but you know it's i was actually one of the guys um there is one list that i wholeheartedly do respect out of the nids and it because and it was years ago when this list was run and it was funnily enough what the streamer that I raided last night was ended up talking about is that uh, the old uh, seventh edition list that was called Lick to Shame, and this is the only list that I actually res respected from the Tyranids because it actually didn't rely on any of the crutch units like most of the other armies did. It relied on Lictors and Death Leapers and. and units that you wouldn't normally see 
to do well. And uh, a guy named Sean <laughs> Naden, one of the higher uh, level 40k competitive players over in the States, was able to pilot that to near victory at several events. So, yeah, but awesome. Oh, sorry. That should have worked for what I was wanting to do, but oh well. Yeah, but cool. Uh, the 2070 rendering, and yeah, yeah. So I've got two Strix 960s, yeah, but... One of, the, um, one of the moves yeah. that always got me was um, when they burrow underground, and I would forget about them. Ah, um, Morlocks. Yeah. I, like I said, I can't remember which ones did what, but I just knew that they would just pop up behind me, and I'd be like, well, there goes my Devastator Squad. <laughs> yep. Yep. I remember the, um... The Morlocks were pretty good. Like, they weren't too tough to kill either, but the thing was that they could then burrow back down. So if you didn't kill them in the one turn they're gone for a turn and then they come back somewhere else on the board and you might actually be able to kill them and yeah so that's yeah one of those things that i was like yeah i, I, I like <laughs> that like thematically that makes sense but gameplay wise that just hurts that just yeah. that, that i learned real like quick a kick not in the to tell him what my favorite unit was <laughs> Yeah. He's like, fair. what's your favorite unit? And I'm like, oh, I'm playing me, um, I want to play, can I play Dreadnoughts? Because I love Dreadnoughts. That's, that's my staple. And he'll be like, you can run all Dreadnoughts if you want. And I was like, sweet, I got this really cool new one. It's a, it's a Primaris, and I, I'm going to throw it on the board and see how it does. Comes up right behind it. And I was like, okay. We're still friends, right? He goes, yeah. I said, I'm. I'm not happy with you right now because <laughs> my dice rolls are horrible. <laughs> you could put six on five sides and a one on the sixth. And I would roll that one when I don't need it. <laughs> so, oh. uh, unfortunately, sometimes that's just the way the dice rolls. Indeed. Yeah, too easy, Burp. Catch you soon, bud. But usually when, when stuff like that gets gets to that point uh, me personally i'm the type of player that'll sit there and go all right well i've lost about 50 percent of my army what do i plan on doing now usually my tactic is i'm gonna kill something <laughs> i'm gonna kill something on the board and i'll feel good about myself and that usually works <laughs> it yeah. doesn't work for winning the game but it does for the self-satisfaction the the morale boost the that's right moral <laughs> victory of the day <laughs> Yeah, oh, I know my. that feeling. It's, uh... <laughs> yeah. I've had a couple of games that are like that at times. Even against people that I don't end up liking afterwards. It's like, oh, yeah, cool. That's, that's, <laughs> that's good fun. Not really. Talk about a gotcha moment. <laughs> that That's probably one of my biggest bugbears, is gotcha moments in the game at the moment. Just with the amount of stratagems, the amount of different crap that's here there and everywhere you can't know what someone's strategy is and, and you know how they're going to play and like i get that there's tactical diversity in that but then there's also you know people who will tell you one thing and then they pull out a strat and it makes that one thing no longer the truth of what they originally told you and it's like really dude like you told me that when I specifically asked about it, it was this, and now you've got something that makes it this, and it's not, you right. know, it's, you know, totally understand. so that's, that's what I do not enjoy about the game to a degree at the moment. Don't get me wrong, I think stratagems are a great idea, I just think that you should be fully upfront with the stratagems that you could be using. Um, and that there should be a way that if you have your army list all written up and everything and you're, you know what your list uses in terms of its, um, 
you know, stratagems that, or what stratagems are available that you should actually note that down on your army list, I think is something that would be beneficial. Because then you're, you're saying, cool, these are the stratagems that uh, I'm allowed to use for this army list, just so you're aware. <laughs> Even if you don't note down fully what they do, you, you've then given your opponent an opportunity to go, actually, what does what do each of them do? Hey, and to ask. Or they might be a player that knows that codex really well, and they go, okay, too easy, thanks for that, but you don't have to explain them, I, I know what most of them do. It, it allows for yeah. open and fair gameplay. Right. So. Mm. Oh, gosh. I'm almost done all of this red. And then, I actually think I'm going to call it there. I've been streaming for the past four hours, and I'm actually getting quite hungry. So you dropped out for a second, there, Steve. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. I apologize. So, what wh what are you fixing us? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're hilarious. Um, I had pizza for dinner last night, and I left half of it for today. So, it's gonna Ooh. be a, a, a nice meat lovers pizza. Is my lunch. You're killing me, Smalls. So. It's okay. I have pizza tonight, so mm. it's all it's all fair. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, I can't remember what I've actually got on the... What's actually planned for dinner tonight. I can't remember whether I'm cooking or my wife's cooking. Um, but anyway, we'll figure it out, I guess. It's probably on the whiteboard <laughs> on the on the fridge. Always is. So. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm really happy that, you know, I've been able to get this much work done on these guys today. Considering how slow the Death Watch took me. <laughs> to get done. How's your progress looking on your guys? Um, not bad. I think I've. I'm so slow. <laughs> um, I think one guy is completely done. One guy needs to have his pointy dad, doodad thing done with the uh the gray, and then he'll be done. This guy. We need to do the ammo, uh, or the, the gun casing to make it yellow like these guys. Uh, again, it's kind of hard to see, but um, I think the yellow makes it stand out from the other colors. Mm -hmm. And I think it's orky in a way, so. Um, so, yeah, I mean, pretty much all the hard stuff is done. Now it's just the gun and the tips of the hats. And I've got Gobos, or Gretchen rather, that are all uniform but not uniform and i think that's how i'm going to do it yeah like the nice. whole checkerboard thing so yeah but, uh, which is cool so um but i i greatly appreciate it um i hope that that uh you enjoy your meat lovers pizza yeah it, make it, sure it... that you save me a slice <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure how long it'll last, considering you got to fly halfway across the world to come get it. <laughs> we'll just FedEx it. My dad used to work for FedEx. We'll just <laughs> just throw it in a box. I'll tell you his his information and overnight it, and it should be fine. <laughs> uh, Three weeks later, you open it up and it's all moldy. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, I am almost done. Uh, but yeah, no, it's been, it's actually been awesome hanging out with you, Steve. Uh, Steve, -o. just thank you. Thank chatting you. and great. painting and promoting your channel on mine as well. I hope that, you know, a couple of my guys have come over and been able to have a chat and hang out with you as well. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say goodbye. Uh, but you know, thanks for hanging out with me, and I hope that we'll be able to dual stream at some point soon in the future as well and hopefully get mango on with this also <laughs> indeed i look forward to it thank you also and uh for everything and we will definitely have to do this we'll have to do uh as mango would say a three-way <laughs> painting painting yes a trio stream <laughs> for sure 
Alrighty, mate. <laughs> I'll talk to you soon. Alright. Bye bye. Alrighty, chat. Hope, uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed that. Hope you enjoyed hanging out with uh, Skeletal Steve, Stevo. Um, as you can probably see, I've gotten all the uh, the base coats done on these guys, and I've touched up the reds, which has been absolutely awesome. Um, so yeah, uh, absolutely love the progress I made on these guys today. Um, what we're gonna do is as we wrap up, we're gonna go raid. Skeletal Steve as well. Um, send him some, you know, some followers, so, some guys to help keep his stream going. Um, and just... So yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna call it a wrap there. Um... And, you know, go. I'm going to grab some lunch. But I did want to thank you guys for hanging out with me once again. Um, it has been absolutely awesome to stream and spend time with you guys. Um, hope you guys uh, will enjoy Steve's stream. I'm going to make sure that I catch up with him again at some point soon. It was awesome to chat with him. Um, awesome to chat with all you guys in chat as well. If you haven't dropped a follow, please drop a follow. Uh, I am an affiliate now as well, so if you want to subscribe, feel free to, but no pressure. Completely up to you. I've also got the Discord, so if you hit exclamation mark Discord in chat, or it's on my Twitch page as well, uh, you can find it there. But, you know, apart from that, guys, uh, I'm going to wrap it up there, and I will catch you all next time.